Paco's back in town. This time, it's gonna work out and we're gonna be married. Ben Lutman. He's doing a childish thing. This is India. You guys have to wrap up this thing at last. Will they stop us? If they do, I'll be devastated. <clears throat> What's up guys, it's me. Not Jay Shetty, but another brown guy who looks vaguely like him. And I am giving you unqualified relationship advice on two people who probably need it, but don't want it. Today's video is about <clears throat> 90 Day Fiance and a couple called Summit and Jimmy. Now, if you don't know who they are, Summit is a person who used to go by the name Michael Jones, or as he likes to call himself, Michael Jones. He catfished an old lady into loving him. The great part of the story is the catfish worked and not only did she love him, she actually went to India. So this is the most successful catfish of all time. It is also probably the most successful scam of all time. I don't know what exactly it is yet because at the moment they haven't gotten married. So I don't know what's happening in this relationship and today is a very, very deep dive on their love story. I have made a video on it before. If you'd like to watch that, then I'll link it down below. And you can also, maybe I'll do a playlist on this, but we're going deep, very deep, or most too deep into this. And uh, no, this is not just an excuse for me to use my Indian accent for all of you comment that. I wonder if you know that I know he's lying right now. And no, it's not also an excuse to wear a beautiful kurti. Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Which I just learned last week. I'm getting back into my culture. So we're going to take a look at that without further ado. But before I get into that, I just want to say, please subscribe so I can buy more kurtis. I mean, look at this. <laughs> do I look good in it? Please tell me if I do down below. Because if I don't, I'm going to cry. All right. I've just been feeling so crazy lately. All right, <sighs> like I said, they're a couple from 90 Day Fiance. Probably my favorite couple, honestly, because Jenny is so naive for someone who is so old that you would think that she would have died of extinction by now from her lack of survival instincts. And Summit is someone who lies so much and is unable to do so many things because he lived with his parents for so long. That is pretty much perfect. She's so naive that she's willing to date a guy who literally called himself Michael Jones from the start of their relationship. And he needs a mother. S love. Hey, quick plug by myself. I'm today's sponsor. Woo! I am doing more deep dives than ever this year and like this uber, uber long video, I think that I might need a few more editors on board. So once again, I'm going to provide footage down below if you just click the link in the description. This is something that you might like or something that you'd want to do. If you're good at things like pacing, meme edits, maybe green screen stuff, then please feel free to edit the footage and send it back to me. I will be looking at things about a week from now. That is the deadline. It's a small piece of footage, but if I like the work, then I'll definitely get in contact with you and we can talk more. I would love to have more people on the team. It is going to be a fun and exciting year and I have a surprise for some of those who make it, I will let you in on a couple secrets that we have going on for the year. Other than that, if you have any questions, I'll also leave my email down below. You can message me there. And if you're just here watching this thinking, can we please get to the four hour video? F you, it took a long time. I'm joking, I love you. Oh, just get to the video. Uh, as I said, it's gonna be a long video, so you better strap in. No seatbelts? Not for me. Hey man, Fuck it. Hey. And uh, there is one more part to this video after this, and I hope that you enjoy it because that'll be the conclusion. But but this is like the second Lord of the Rings. The, I don't know any of that. I, I think the Lord of the Rings, the guy dies. This is the one where they give the ring. All right. My name is Jenny. I'm from Palm Springs, California, and I'm 61 years old. Soon to be 62. God damn. All right. Well, it's been a, it's been a while because I think she started the series at about 50 something. She's aging in like dog years. Sorry. But she is. For five months, I've been living with my daughter and sleeping on her couch. I have no car. I have no job, no apartment, no furniture. God damn, you sound like me, but I'm not 62. I'm not saying that it's... Well, I don't have a daughter whose couch I sleep in. On. In. You know what? Love does crazy things, man. Love makes a 62-year-old sell all her possessions and sleep on her daughter's couch because that Indian D is... <laughs> <laughs> something that she really needs. Something she can't get from America. So good on you, Summit. You made an old lady sleep on a couch for months because you're so good in bed. No money, nothing. Because I literally gave up my whole life to move to India to be with Summit. 
Who starts over again at my age? Literally no one. And this is the thing with Jenny. She is the most naive person that you'll meet if you told her, you know, in 1945 when she was still about 40, that uh, if you were German and you said, look that way, and then did your crazy stuff, she probably would. That kind of goal. And sometimes you need that in love. You need a little magic, a little like, oh, I'm going to just believe the impossible. So I commend her for trying at this age. It's not a bad thing. And she's not a bad person. But sometimes you just want to, because she's just, she, you know, you know what I mean? She's one of those, like, you're like, oh, her heart means well, but her brain is stupid. She's like R. Kelly in reverse. Kelly R. You telling me? It was heartbreaking to leave India after giving up everything and finding out that Sumit was married. Oh my god, that was the cliffhanger in the first episode. Sumit and Jenny had to leave each other and she had to go back to the States because Sumit, uh, he sort of told his parents that Jenny is not like my caretaker, that's gonna be maybe my wife. And then they were actually torn apart. Also, Sumit, he was married. That was a very late, convenient thing that he forgot to mention to everyone. It's like a Romeo and Juliet story if Juliet, instead of the girl, was the girl's grandmother. We left on a cliffhanger, so I don't know. Are they going to get back together? Are they going to hate each other? What's going to happen? Jenny, tell me what it is. They've been lying to me, but I still love Samit, and I forgave him. He never wanted to be with his wife in the first place. As most men claim, I... <laughs> I went down on one knee to tie my shoelace and she said, I do. And I said, I doubt it. And now we're married, so. Smith is filing for his, his divorce. He's proven to me that he wants to be with me. I am the one he loves. As we get a sense of Jenny, we also get a sense of how her mind works and how she's willing to believe and put narratives into her head that have the slightest bit of truth. And every time there's some sort of Thing that's like, mm, I wouldn't do that if I were you. She shuts it off and creates her own narrative as to why she should. Sometimes that benefits her. Most of the time that just ends up making her feel awkward or put in bad positions. But if she wasn't like that, then they probably wouldn't get as far as they did. Because Samit cannot make a decision to save his life. So it's an odd relationship, but it somehow works. It's one of those janky ones where you look at them and you're like, I, I get it. <laughs> That's crazy. Even though I miss the myth, it's nice to be back with my daughters again. I need to get back in shape. I have a much younger man to uh, keep up with. That's disgusting. I'm sorry. I mean, good for your sex life, but I'm, I'm leaving this conversation. It's like hearing grandma say she wants to get a doggy style. Oh, God in hell. So you're thinking about going back to India? Honestly, um, I am going back. So what's happening with the wife? She's not around. They're not living together anymore. I want to say that this like also is a very interesting series because of the East and Western cultures that clash. For many Westerners, I would suppose if you hear the fact that I still have a wife, it's an automatic no-no. For most people, you'd be like, mm, sort that shit out. But in Eastern culture tradition, this man had gotten a wife before he even knew about it almost. Sometimes you're predetermined to have these relationships. In a lot of parts in India, uh, arranged marriage is still a thing and it transcends love in a spiritual level. It's more a logical, practical thing that families do. So he might be married to someone that he absolutely doesn't love. And then he found Jenny and he said, mm, those wrinkles and crow's feet are just the things that I want to beat my meat to. Wrinkles and crow's feet, let me beat my meat, submit. So he found her and then he found love. Now he needs to divorce his wife, even though he never loved her. On the outside, it's like, oh God, that's a train wreck. On the inside, it's like, it's more complicated. And that's why this is an interesting relationship for me. He still lies a lot, but I'm defending him this one time because most of the other times in the series, I'm just going to rip him apart. They've agreed to a mutual divorce. It'll take a couple months. His lawyers are working to make it happen quicker. Do you think at all he's lying about the divorce? Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Jenny's daughters in the series are like the voice of reason. They're probably like the audience being like, hey, do you, do you think he's lying? Because he lied about things like, I don't know, his name, probably his height, his ethnicity. He lied about that. He said he was white. That's not true because nobody says they're white. So Jenny's daughters are like questioning her. And if you look at her reaction, she looks like... <gasps> 
I never thought he could lie. She's got like such a quick memory to defend this man. I don't know what he does to deserve it. Jenny didn't even think that maybe he could be lying about this whole situation, which I can bet that he is. Have you seen the paperwork? No. I'd like to see that paperwork. I need to see it too, of course. If the lying continues, we're done. We're done. You're done. You're done. Yeah, so Jenny hasn't seen the paperwork of, of a divorce. She's just going off of Summit's word, which is as good as nothing because that's the problem, he lies a lot. And she's just going back to India with some hope. It's like someone telling you they won the lotto and not showing you the ticket. Do you really believe it? All right. If Sumit's not being truthful about his ability to get a divorce, if he lies to me again, that's, that's the worst thing he can do to me at this point. Well, I'm sure there'll actually be worse things that he can do to you at later points, but I just like the way she said, his ability to get a divorce like he's some like superhero. Marvel needs to make a new MCU character, the divorceman. It's like this Indian guy who's like, divorced. You're, you're, I'm not married to you anymore. You suck. Prenup. <laughs> that, that needs to be a thing. I don't deserve that. If it doesn't work this time, that'll destroy me. You know, this- uh, Prenup man over here is like an evil prenup and Jenny gets destroyed. It's, she's like the Thanos. Divorced. We're still married. I don't care. Cheating. I <laughs> might be three times a charm for you, but it might be three strikes. You're out for us. Hi. So later on, she calls Samit from India and she questions him. She gives him the hard like, did you do this? And he says this. How are you? I'm good. What about you? Always happy when I'm talking to you. I'm coming back in one week. I'm happy you are coming back. Yay. I'm happy you're coming back. Yay. Holy shit. <laughs> Do you already book the flight? Fuck. Yes, I'm so happy about it. I got everything ready. Please move. <laughs> okay, I'll see you. Yeah, I, I actually, I, I find a big house. Nobody would be there to bother us. No one's going to come knocking on our front door. Amazing. Summit actually found a bigger house. See, in the first episode, in the first deep dive, they were in the small house far away. But somehow their parents located him and they actually went to his house along with his married family. They came to his house and took him away and all this stuff happened. It was like John Wick for Indians. Uh <laughs> But apparently that's what happened. So now he found a bigger house, a safe house, if you will, because nobody's going to find them. Nobody in India, baby. Nobody will going to come. Having no one come to your house in India, a population of 1.3 billion, your house must be like under fucking water or something. You must be like India, Atlantis, Spiralina. You're like Poseidon, Indian Poseidon. I don't know if that's a thing, Submit. I don't... Okay. I'm just saying. No more lying. Just nothing but truth from you. Yeah, baby, I'm not lying anymore because I saw the consequences of lying. So Sumit then says that he's not lying anymore. He's done lying. Uh, pfft, that's just something a liar would say. Gotcha, bitch. I'm sorry, Jenny. But Jenny's willing to give him so many chances because she's really in love with him. She... She sees something in him. <laughs> and he sees something in here. I, I don't get it, but I'm happy for them. And hopefully the lying will stop. Except it won't, because there's so much left in this episode. You gotta, you gotta watch it. There's gonna be so much stupid stuff. So what's going on with your divorce? We already made the first payment. So the next payment would be after six months. That's not what you told me, though. Oh, he's lying again. Uh, I guess Jenny was wrong. All the stuff she said, all the constant first part of this video, Jenny's unwavering belief in this man has gone down the drain in a few seconds. He made the first divorce payment. He's making the second one in six months. Three years later, he'll make the third one. By the time him and his ex-wife have kids, he might make the fourth thing. And by the time his kids have grandkids, maybe he'll get divorced. It should be good. You told me the divorce will be completed within two months. I was thinking that is for the divorce date, but was it date for my- Birthday. <laughs> I got those mixed up. Divorce, birthday, both happy times in my life. Can I just ask, if if you are watching this, what is your limit? Like, that's something I constantly think of when I look at this, because it's a good to like analyze this and be like, what is your limit? If someone says something to you, how many chances do you give them before you say, I need to 
reevaluate my self-worth and see how much I'm putting myself through. Say you want to get married, say you're 60 something and you don't have time, but this is what you want. You might love a person, but if they're not giving you what you want, how much can you put up with if you're constantly trying to tell them or pull them? You can only do so much for a person before it's out of your control and you need to let them make the decision. Jenny doesn't ever let go of Summit's hand and sometimes she needs to pull him for him to actually come with her and that's the problem. She shouldn't need to. I'm not saying that he doesn't love her, I'm saying that maybe he doesn't feel the consequences off her leaving as much because he knows she won't do it. Smith's wife is making false accusations and claims. She's claiming that he was hurting her, treating her bad. She was supposed to drop those charges. So Smith's wife is blackmailing him, which I didn't know was such a common thing in India. Everyone starts speaking about it like that's normal. I didn't know since when blackmail was just like a common like, oh, you got blackmailed. What is it, Tuesday again? Uh, it feels like that should be a more serious thing, perjury and lying and falsifying information. It, sh it should be a very, very big charge but apparently everyone's okay with it in India. That's not the worst thing. I guess losing a game of cricket. I'm not sure what exactly the problem is but his wife won't let him divorce her even though they both hate each other. So I feel a little bad for Summit because he's probably dealing with a lot more than he should be but at the same time he's not one to take initiative so He's just got two people here pulling him at either side. As you know, I'm coming back for the third time. I'm going to need to see, like, proof that you're getting a divorce. Nobody will going to bother us and we will be together happy. That's a song. That should be a Beatles song. Nobody going to bother us and we'll be together and happy. That's some it should write music. It's, it's an R. Kelly song if you don't want it to be. If you have the vibrato for it and also willing to go to jail and pee on people. <laughs> It's a good song, Summit. You need some bars. Or you'll be behind them. I don't know. Wow! Very dangerous! So have you told your parents and do they know that I'm coming back to India? The main problem with, like, Summit and Jenny, besides everything, is Summit's parents, who absolutely do not like Jenny. Not because she's white or anything like that, but because of her age, they feel like the societal norm in India will not accept them. And it's a big thing in India for um, your family to be liked and seen in a high regard. Unfortunately, a lot of people live in the time where other people judging them has very high merit and value on their lives. So if other people see them as not high value people and stuff, it affects them. And the way that you're seen as high value is if your children are successes to what you want them to be. That's why in so many cases, like say you go to high school or college, a lot of your Indian or maybe Asian friends will be doing things that they may not want to do, but their parents want them to do. Translation, every Indian's a doctor, not because they love saving lives, but because their parents love money and status. I, of course, ruined my parents' dreams. You're ruining it, ruining, ruining the fun for the next man. By becoming whatever the hell this is. On the positive side, I can wear whatever I want to work. Sometimes I don't even wear pants, I'm wearing them right now. They know that you will come back and we will gonna live together. Can you call your parents into the room right now? Do you wanna, do you wanna talk with my parents? No, she just said it. She was fucking with you. Whenever someone like repeats something, you know that they're not ready for it. Like say a girl comes into your room, she's like, let's do it, baby. Let's do it. Les, I, I can't. Let's do it. I'm so sorry, I. Let's do it. And the guy's like, you, you wanna do it? I don't have a penis. I don't know. I don't know how to tell you that, but I don't. It's always when people, that's a double take. So they know I'm really coming back. Can you go get him? Oh my God, he's like, <laughs> can you get him? Yeah, I, I gonna I gonna go to get him right now. What, what, what is Jenny doing? That's my parents. They, they don't, they, they said you are really sexy. Jenny is okay. That's my mom. She's She's got a little fever in her eyes. You can just tell the lies. You can see the lies on his face. I can see it from her screen onto his screen. This man is lying through his eyes, not just his teeth. I can try. Just give me, give me two minutes, okay? The last time I saw Samit's parents was when they were all in my apartment. So yes, the last time that Jenny was in the company of Samit's parents, they were all in the house at one time. Ruckus started 
and they are very not okay with each other there's a lot of fighting and a lot of turmoil and animosity between these people so it's not good and in jenny's position i feel genuinely sorry for her that she has to deal with this because she's not doing anything she can't control her age she can't control how she feels and in a very twist of events on 90 day fiance the person that she cares for cares for her just as much they very much do love each other the problem is the societal bounds the age gap and many other problems that they have to face between their love which i like i like their love i think they're good people they just they just go about it the wrong way. But we're on to the next episode. Yeah, I think we're on episode three. And we're going to find out if the parents like Jenny or they come to the phone. Do they? Hello. Are they coming? Uh, no, baby. They don't want to come. No, the parents hate her still. So that's not changed. So they don't want to talk to me? They don't say that. I never said that they accept our relationship. If it doesn't work out this time with Submit, I'm done. Oh, way to put your foot down, Jenny. You know, third year is the charm. As they always say, 10 more years and you get a free one. I, I, Jenny, you have to, you have to, they're empty threats. Sometimes Jenny will say things and Samit will be like, baby, baby, calm down. Baby, calm down, calm down. And she'll maybe blow a gasket and then five minutes later we'll come back. Jenny's not necessarily strong enough to say, Samit, if you don't do the things that I need from you, I have to walk out. It's not that I don't love you. In fact, that's the only reason I've stuck around for so long. But I, as a human, have my limits too. I also have time factor. And I might not have a job at home. So I can't do this all if you're not going to do certain things for me. We both have to sacrifice a lot. Jenny can't really put that into words other than say I'm leaving a hundred times and not leave. So unless she can do that, Samit's not going to take those threats seriously. And he shouldn't not take it seriously, but how can he? Do you know what I mean? He's not gonna change, she's not gonna change. They just keep, they keep on hitting these walls. That's the problem with these two. But you know, she's, if, if he does this 10 more times, I'm, I might walk out. Maybe I will, I'll walk to the door and then I'll walk out. Last few months was very dark time for me. She always supported me, she always loved me and that's what gave me strength that I can fight. It's very wholesome and very cute and the fact that they both see each other in such high regard makes me always question what the hell they do in the bedroom but it also makes me feel like well that's beautiful and that's very pure that besides all of this bs they can still see each other in the highest manner so i, I always look at it and i'm like i like them i want them to succeed but I'm going to make so much fun of them in the process because come on. When I finally get divorced, uh, like straight away, I gotta marry Jenny. So how are you, Anne? Jenny is coming back. So on the next scene, Samit is playing cricket with his homies and uh, they're asking about Jenny. Anytime anyone says anything that doesn't agree with him, he'll go from like, hey, you are just my friend to I'm trying, bro. He's like, start screaming and stuff. He really blows gaskets very easy. And I always find it funny how he could go from zero to a hundred like that quick, even on his friends, his family. He turns into like Indian Hulk. What about your family members? I know my mind. parents won't be happy. I will choose my family. Think about family's first priority, right? Wrong, because love actually creates new family. Also, you can't bang your family unless it's Alabama. You don't want to be there. You're Indian. That's a weird place to be if you're from Alabama. That's a weird accent. Hello, my friend. You sound like Borat a little bit. You know what I mean? What I'm trying to say is, in Western culture, I think we got this one right a little bit. Yes, your family is very important, but they're so annoying. And besides Thanksgiving, you don't have to see them. You can make a new family, a sexy one, which you call your wife. And then you can make kids. Then they become your priority. So if your family is your only priority, you're wrong. Just because they did things a certain way doesn't mean you have to. That's how you break tradition. And you sort of have to in life because that's what el that's what evolving with the situation is. Submit is just trying to break tradition. He's trying to marry an old lady. It might not be sexy, but it's a stand for India. 
I think. What about your divorce status? You know what Gandhi said? Damn, that's a white bitch. I like it. I don't know if he said it, but I but I know he thought it. Pretty filed for a divorce. By the grace of God, you can say that it's a mutual divorce. Saying that I have to pay them twenty thousand dollars. Can you imagine how crazy your life has to be that you get down every night and you're like, dear God, can you please divorce me from this horrible fucking woman? I just, I hate it. I hate it. I also thank you for the food. I'm in. Do you know how that's crazy, man? I don't. I don't know. That's a tough position to be in. I never, I never prayed for a divorce before. I definitely prayed to hit it a couple times, but like Jesus Christ, that's Jesus Christ. My father-in-law said that I spent twenty thousand dollars in marriage. Give me my money back. Okay. It's Ten thousand already. How oh, you're managing those funds? My father is helping. So Summit has to pay twenty thousand dollars. I don't know if they converted it to dollars. If it's rupees, it's like three hundred dollars. I think it's doable, but twenty thousand dollars. For a divorce is a lot of money, especially if you're earning money in rupees. That's that's a lot. That's gonna take a big chunk out of your family savings. And last that we heard, his dad actually helped to pay it off. And I don't know how they're gonna recoup that money, but they've only paid half of it. So they're not fully in the process of a divorce. They've only got the D part. D is for dog. D O G Dog. And then the divorce is, comes after the 10,000. So I think he needs to do that. It's really crazy that in Eastern tradition, this is like, this is how they operate. Like I'm still getting around that fact as well. I've never been to India. I've never experienced the culture, but some of the things really like strike me as behind the times. Wow, very dangerous! I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be disrespectful. They don't like Jenny, they're paying you $10,000. I'm confused whether you're telling me the truth. They are helping me because I'm this I'm explaining you something, please wait, wait, let wait, me wait, explain. Wait. Do you think they have like, Breaking Bad in India Do it. This is gonna sound slightly, do any people like meth? If you find like an Indian Jesse Pinkman, like Jesse Singh, mm -hmm. I guess. I, then maybe they could... You need money, Summit. Maybe you should watch seasons one to six of Breaking Bad and get that money. That's my... I'm trying to give you ideas here. My parents are helping me because they love me. They don't agree with my relation with Jenny. Do you think any, uh, any job is going to pay you that much salary? Yes. Meth dealer. Breaking Bad, season three. You just gotta shave your hair and get a goatee. Get Jesse Pinkman, RV, some meth. Maybe your Indian lawyer it shouldn't be too hard. You'll be great. Trust me, it might work. That's that's gonna be my lawyer saying. Trust me, it could work. Dude, she is over aged. What about your children? Come on, We're not gonna once. have any children. Oh, so okay, so now's a really important part in the series when one of the friends says, what about her age? She's over aged, which is just, the most funny insult that I've ever heard unintentionally. She's overripe. She's done being ripe. She's pruny. Um, but he brings up a very interesting point that she probably is past the stage of being able to have kids. She's already had children. She's, you know, done that. Uh, and, but if she wants to have any with Summit, maybe the time's passed. And Summit's like, I don't want to have kids. And that's the thing that you say sometimes in defense. Like, I love her. I'm not going to have kids. But maybe down the line, they might want to have kids. Of course, there's options like adopting or uh, artificial insemination, but maybe they wanted to have kids in a certain way. And it's an interesting thing that I never thought about during the series. I think if Samit doesn't want to and Jenny doesn't want to, then it's perfectly fine. But everyone else in India would want them to have kids of their own. So it's kind of like this pressure of society for them to have kids more than it is for themselves. And that's, that's tough to deal with for sure. So, there's another issue going on there. Are we gonna have children? No. He needs to understand this. Jenny is 62 years old, lady. I think he does understand it, bro. I think every night in bed, he understands it, if you know what I mean. I think she gives him a run for his money, if anything. I don't think like in Indian culture, everything will be clear. Forget about the Indian culture. I know about the Indian culture. But society is not going to accept you anymore. And then who cares? This is why I like him. This is the only time he stands up for something is to say who cares about societal norms in this country. In Eastern tradition, who gives a F? I started off as Michael Jones, the salesman. I was contacting people for not only scams, but also 
relationships and I did it. This man is the definition of I didn't do it the way that Indians thought I would. He went onto Facebook, he catfished someone into a relationship, double his age, double the love. It's like a Kit Kat, four times the fun. It's amazing. I absolutely agree with him and maybe I'm just not seeing it from everyone else's perspective, but who cares? If you're happy, you're happy. It's If it's within legal bounds and you're happy, it's fine. I needed to say that because some people are going to be like, oh, if you're happy, you're happy, and then get the chainsaw out. It's, mm -mm. Do you think yeah. it's so easy to avoid such culture? No, I'm born? not avoiding culture. Yes, that's what you're saying. I'm avoiding hater. Oh! I'm avoiding hater. This guy sounds more like DJ Khaled every time. My guy. Man, maybe cricket just makes him like, gives his testosterone a boost and he can stand up to people. I, I really like when he stands up. What do you mean by that? For himself. One thing he knows is when he's in love, he's in love. It's beautiful. I appreciate someone who stands up for himself and his woman and everything else. Now we're going to watch him lie for the next hour or so, so it's not going to be all good, but this is a great moment. Dark time, like when uh, me and Jenny was together freely and living happily. The best time of my life ever. Damn, that was the best time? You 60 year old lady? I live with my grandma, I wouldn't say it's the best time. It was good. She made good food. The best time? I don't All right, man, hey, more power to you. You ever try going to strip club? All right, anyway. I leave for India and in just about under a week. And before I... So it's the next day, we're back in America, and Jenny is going back to her financial advisor slash accountant, who at this point I don't even think exists other than to be a comedic character being like, Jenny, what are you doing? I, I think his only job is to understand how ridiculous she is with money. I don't even know how he accepted her as a client, but she's going to ask how much money she can save so that she can go back to India. And this guy constantly is like, what money? You don't have money. How do you keep asking? How do you afford me? How are you paying for this? I'm going to go meet with my financial advisor. What happened? You were planning on spending the rest of your life in India. We were living just fine. Come to find out that he had a wife. Brian looks like a goddamn sitcom character. He looks like family guy, the person. But I'm sorry, I don't, like, it's just Brian over here constantly is like, damn, she's back. I, I don't know what I would say if I was her financial advisor. I would probably just say, if I were you, I'd freeze all my accounts. Because you're not getting scammed, but you're scamming yourself. I've never seen the Indian person not do the scamming, but you do the scamming to yourself from him. It's like some sort of voodoo magic that's going on. Just freeze your accounts, please. Really? He just kind of forgot to mention that part. Holy smokes. He, he is a sitcom character. Anyone who says holy smokes and isn't in a sitcom deserves to be. Holy crab cakes, Batman. What the heck -a Like, oh, wow. Ryan, those suspenders are a bit too colorful. Are you here permanently? I am going to go back to India. Wow, and so when is that? Within a week. Wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow, you're throwing a lot of stuff on me. I need a Papa Zanny, man. You got you got one week. How much money do you have? Oh, you oh you need money for me, of course. I'm not just your financial advisor. I'm your friend now. Too. <sighs> God, Jenny, why do you do this? This guy looks like he's gonna have a heart attack every time she comes in. Every time they're like, it's Jenny. He's like, oh, cancel my five thirty. I need I need a moment, please. How much money? You have negative money? Oh my god, why are you even here? Do I think Submit is being truthful? If I was Jenny, there's no way I'd be going back to Submit or- If you were Jenny, there's no way he'd be going back to you. <laughs> what are you talking about? How much was the rent? 300 a month. How much do you think your utilities are? Maybe 50. So with rent, utilities, and food, you're at roughly 550. You needed a financial advisor to put those figures together. You couldn't count 350, 150, and 50? Maybe you don't need a financial advisor. Maybe you need Jesus, honestly. I don't like the idea that my mom could potentially be supporting Simi off of her um, social security, which is barely enough to support herself. Unfortunately, uh, Jenny is actually, well, she's retired and she's using her pension money and all of the money she saved to spend on paying money for renting the house and things. Summit is busy paying for the divorce. And at the moment, I don't think he's working. I guess he used to be in that maybe IT 
thing, call center, perhaps, but that's not necessarily paying the bills. And it's a very tough situation. Like, I don't know how Jenny feels about it, but like, if you're the only breadwinner, I'm sure if you're a couple and stuff, then at some point you feel uh, resistance or probably something towards the other partner if you're, if you're the only one putting in money, because that's a big deal. That's a big deal when you're the one traveling to them, paying for everything to try and sustain this relationship. It always takes two to make a relationship, and and it does matter. Money does matter. So, so I would feel I would feel pretty scared if I was her, and her daughter is like saying again the thing that all the audience is thinking. If I were you, I would be more cautious about this. I'm living in a different part of town. It's a very old house, so my brother is helping me to move. Actually, it's quite far from. So back in India, Cement moves to a new place, a place that's cheaper, further away from home, and he gets his brother to help him move. While they're there, the brother and him have a conversation about home, family, and their parents. My mom and dad are aware of it. You are again moving in here with Jenny. Still, they are not happy with that. They are against the age factor. Don't do not do the bunny ears. Don't age factor. There is an age factor. Two of Cement equals one Jenny. That's some simple, simple arithmetic. This man could fuse and still be maybe younger than her. Put this into perspective. When Jenny was 35, this motherfucker was five. She could have held him in her arms and let him suck on the titty, just like she does now, 30 years ago, and it would still be somewhat okay. It would be a little weird, like, that's not your baby, and also, why are you marrying it 30 years later? But, like, it's weird, but it's not that weird. I know it's 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 a legal age difference and it's 30 years, but sometimes love transcends that. So we're in a gray area here, like her hair. Jenny is the same age as your mom, right? right? Yeah, actually Jenny is elder than my mom and that's the thing my parents doesn't like. Again, I'm gonna ask you, the audience, whoever's watching this right now, how would you feel like if you had someone dating, or you were dating someone who was older than your parent, or you knew of a friend that was dating someone older than your parent? Would that feel weird to you? Would that not? It's a, it's a very interesting feeling. Like, on one hand, you want to be happy for them because love is love. On the other hand, it is weird. Like, where is the common interest when we take you out for drinks and stuff? Do we need to get her a bub or a maybe a helper? Is the wheelchair for fun or is it just because she's getting cramps? Like what is happening? You got you got to figure out these things. The plan is like that once I get divorced, then I'll marry Jenny. You are the eldest son. Eldest son is always the one who respects their parents a lot. Yeah, the youngest son is the one who says, uh, F you, Dad, you're a bitch, Mom, suck it. That's just tradition, isn't it? As it goes in India, an ideal son is to be like helping their parents in their old age after 10 years. Jenny will be getting more older. See, this is why I can never live in like Indian tradition because I'm gonna kick my parents to the curb. I already kicked my parents to the curb. These old two farts can go and, you know, wrestle in the old home. I'm an only child, but honestly, I wish I wasn't even the child. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Like, yeah, it's, I think anybody from Eastern tradition will understand you got to take care of your parents, you respect them. Lots of migrant like sons or daughters or people of migrants will realize how, how important it is to respect and love your family and how much they might have did and how much they put up with. You have that eternal love, but at the same time you have to live your own life. There's a fine line between living for someone and living for yourself. And there needs to be a damn good balance. In fact, I think you should be more selfish because that's the way that you need to live. You're going to be with yourself more than you are with others. And, and if you're not kind to yourself, if you're not giving yourself the best life, you're going to regret it by the time it's up. There's only so much you can do living for other people. He will be not available with my parents. Uh, he will be there with Jenny. Society will be looking upon my family with shame. This life I'm choosing is a thug life, Tupac, right? Nope. It's at least giving me happiness. Nobody held me. They always knew that I never want to get married. If they knew that, why did they put me into that bit of trouble? God damn, the brother's looking like, oh shit, I started something, didn't I? So Samit is like finally getting that rage in him and he's like telling someone off. Because you can see that Samit has all this inside tension that he needs to let out. And I think he needs to have this conversation with his parents. You know, therapy sounds like it was a joke 20 years ago. In, in Indian culture, in brown people culture, 
Talking to therapists, talking about your feelings is seen as a weak thing to do. It makes you a weak individual. It's not actually true, but that's the um, perception that a lot of people have. So it's very rare that one, men will talk about their feelings, two, brown men, and three, brown people in, in, in Eastern culture will ever talk about their feelings. But I think therapy is not only good, I think, honestly, it might be necessary for most people. It doesn't make you a weaker individual. It makes you stronger for wanting to get to know yourself and your situation better so you can control things. So I think that's amazing and something that they should do they're not doing it at the moment, but they, they should. Two years, two and a half years, I struggled by myself. Did they support me? Did you ever? Yeah, you told me that if you're having problems, get divorced. But did you able to say that in front of mom? Yeah, blame your brother. Did you tell her that I could get a divorce, bro? Did you? Shut up. This is, shut up. Man, shut up. You're the younger one. No. Jenny helped me. She stood up for me. I want them to be happy because I'm happy. I don't want to make them happy and make me suffer once again. This is some of the stuff he says is the most real shit that I ever heard. This is beautiful. I want to... It's a great line to say, <laughs> I want to make them happy by me being happy. And that is how families should work. Despite their best efforts for you, nobody can know yourself better than you. You are living with yourself. And if you're happy, ideally, the people who love you the most should be happy. It's like when you, you're a homie and you see some, like, you know, a girl with your, with your homie and he's like, I really like her. It, regardless of how you feel, you're happy that he's happy. And you're like, that's my guy, I'm happy. That's how you know it's real. When you have people trying to backstab, do all other things, it's, it's not your best interest, it's their best interest. And he just said some real stuff. That's what true happiness is. It's other people being happy for you because they see the person they care about being happy, despite their own reservations. I agree. I want them to like understand why I'm loving Jenny. And uh, if they... Yeah, I actually, I'm... I want to understand why you're loving Jenny. I don't... I, I mean, she's a beautiful... She looks like Christina Applegate if she was 136. But, like, I'd like to know why. I don't want you to lose family. Well, Jenny as well. We'll talk to mom and dad. And I'll try to make them understand the situation. So at the end of the conversation, the brother's like, I don't want you to lose your, you know... Uh, I don't want you to lose your family, and I also don't want you to lose Jenny, so I'll try and talk to them. It'll take a lot of convincing, because uh, Samit's mom and dad are not moving on the situation. They're very stubborn people. But at least the brother is sort of on board, and he's like, I'll try and make them understand your perspective, which is good. Have you seen the papers that we've been talking about for the last couple weeks? The divorce papers? Back in America, uh, remember... Not too long ago, I said when you have to ask something, you do a double take. And Jenny's daughter is like, hey, did you see those divorce papers? And she's like, the divorce papers? You want to see the divorce paper? That's how you know someone's lying. Am I cheating? Am I, am, I, am I cheating? I wouldn't say so. I don't... I would doubt it. It's not likely. You know what I mean? I actually, no, I haven't seen him yet. He hasn't been able to get a hold of his lawyer because some holiday or some festival, that's kind of suspicious to me. Yeah, his lawyer's at a festival. What is he at, Rolling Loud? Yeah. <laughs> Bruno Mars was the shit, bro. When he sung 24 Karat Me, I was like, bro, shit. That's the, whew, goddamn. Eminem was great at it. Eminem's not black. That was Wiz Khalifa, I'm sorry. My only answer is the same answer I'm gonna keep having over and over again. I love him and he's who I wanna be with. Great answer, but that doesn't actually answer the practical side of the questions. You know, it's absolutely great that you love someone that, and, and it transcends all, even practicality. It's great, I love it. But even I have limits. You know, if your boyfriend lived on the moon and you're like, I'm gonna get there somehow, at some point I'm gonna be like, you can't walk there, you need a spaceship or Elon Musk or something, you know? Practicality has to be the root of your dreams so that you can actually have a plan to get there. I'm just saying. Maybe you should have waited to see the paper. Yeah, I should have, but I didn't, and so here we are. It's about time to go. So it's time for Jenny to leave back to India. She hasn't seen the divorce papers, which is all she wanted so that she could move. But she's going there just hoping that Samit does the right thing. But I also know that he loves me and I know that he's not going to let me come back to India with a bunch of lies. I have three requirements. Food, drink, 
and submits a D. He's getting a divorce. Okay, I was wrong. No more lying to me. I was wrong again. And we're getting married. I was almost right. If not, then it's over. Oh, way to put your foot down. If you keep putting your foot down, you might make a hole in the ground. You're just stomping on it, Jenny. If he doesn't, if he doesn't meet those three requirements, then I pro I will be angry. I'm gonna be mad. All right, Jenny. You keep saying that. Someone's going to believe you at some point. How many times has she threatened to leave already? And we haven't even met Samit back in India yet. They're just about to meet. I don't... Those threats are just too empty. Last night when I was at this airport, I was... Drunk. Uh, you can sit down in a bunch of blinds. Oh, sorry. I'm looking forward to hugging her, kissing her. But anyway, um, Samit is now waiting at the airport. Last time... Jenny was uh, put on hold. Samit didn't even come there on time. And she was like all feeling scared and sad. This time he's here early waiting for her. So you can see the improvement. You can see the intent in Samit's eyes and his hair. Like Elvis, little brown Elvis. Beautiful. He's there. He loves her. She loves him. She's going all the way to India. Their love is there. But the lies, age gap, family, all these other things are just... What a beautifully... Crazy. This is, Shakespeare should have wrote this. <laughs> they finally meet again and they hug and they kiss and everyone in India is like, wow. Caretaker program is really, really hands-on these days. Well, well, well. Look who's back in town. <laughs> no more lying, right? No more lying. I love how he answers. They, they have a, like an interview after. She's like, look who's back in town. And he's like, it's, it's Jenny, isn't it? Right? Am I? Who's, who's back? Who, what? Is, is, is a cricketer? Is Je oh, it's Jenny. <laughs> Come on, it's Jenny. Oh, God, she is back. She's back. She's back. Are we near to our house now? I'm gonna take at least two, two and a half hour in. Oh my God. It's a kind of abandoned place. It's abandoned. Maybe he was right when he said nobody can find it. I didn't know he got an abandoned house. Is that legal? Is that, can anyone? I'll take that. Okay. Apparently the house is two and a half hours from the airport. So Jenny was waiting to like, I'm home, take me. And then he took her two and a half hours away. Oh my gosh, that's tough. But Samit's trying. He's, he's getting her a bigger, better place. It's just further away. I don't have any option. I have to see. We must be living pretty far away from the city this time. Yeah, if it's two and a half hours away, Sherlock Holmes, I, I, would, I would say so. So when we pull up to the house, there was a bunch of people. Okay, so we're going to leave my stuff right here? Yeah, some ceremony. And after that, we'll go ahead. Yeah. So in India, big thing, ceremonies constantly throughout this 90 Day Fiance. Ceremonies are a part of it, and it's a beautiful thing to learn about cultures and what people do. Um, you may agree with it, you may not, but it's it's interesting to see how different people take on different things, like getting a new house, blessing it. I know that in for me, uh, when you get a new car, you have to do some sort of thing to like bless the car so that it doesn't crash. I don't do it, but like it's. It's quite like cool to see traditions, cultures, little things that people share and how they develop them in the world. It's just interesting. <laughs> oh, sorry, a cow's taking a shit. I don't know if that's tradition. I think that's just bowel movement. It is a uh, tradition uh, in India. For a cow to take a shit. At least it wasn't in the house. All right. We just want our house to be blessed, to be uh, pure, and like all the negativities go out. Imagine coming home after like two and a half hours. You see a cow there taking a dump and four people singing like they're in a barbershop quartet. I, I would imagine for Jenny, this is like shell shock to a new level. I understand it's culture and tradition, but man, so is jet lag. That's just a must. The next thing I know, they build a big old fire in the pot. It was a little scary for me. So then Jenny's being treated to the culture. She's sort of <laughs> scared of the fire. She's not really acclimated to everything that goes on in India yet, but the fact that she's trying is somewhat sweet. Okay, the cow will come inside the house. The cow's already inside the house. <laughs> Holy Jesus. What is that? What the fuck is that? No, but seriously, what? A cow in here? Cow's not even ready to come. Come this way. Here, this way. I don't want that cow in here. Damn, why wouldn't you? That's a bowl of cow. Look at that cow came dripping. I want that cow in here. Ah, uh, moo. 
They were shitting outside. That's a good cow. It's a, unlike most cows who won't even, you know, have the decency to not take a dump in your toilet. That's a good cow right there. You better be blessed. Cow uh, bring health, wealth, and it helps you like, to give your debts away. My financial advisor doesn't do that shit. You got cows doing that. Health, wealth, and takes your debt away. My tax agent does none of that shit. He's a cow, but in a different way. Send it to my face, fucker. Not online, and see what fucking happens, bro. All right, bro? Send it to my face, not online. I understand that there's cows here. I understand that. I was just scared. I don't know what she's gonna, is she gonna go mad? Is she gonna on my floor? I saw her out on the terrace. Jenny clearly doesn't understand culture. She's like, if it's not American, the cows in our place go straight to the grill. But in, you know, India, of course, are sacred animals. For the large part, Indians don't eat uh, beef. I don't want no beef. You want no beef? You don't want no beef? You don't want no beef? Not Hindus usually, but like, it's a different type of tradition. And if you're gonna marry the man, you marry the culture too. I know it goes both ways, but you have to respect it both parts. It's not like the cow's gonna sit down and have tea every day and be like, what's up? You know, it's just to bless the house, okay, Jenny? It's been an exhausting event. I can't wait to get in bed finally be with Samit. The house is great and everything, but I mean, it's so old, right? Oh, you, but he still likes that. What do you want me to say, Jenny? It's not the prince of India. It's the Burger King of India. We are poor now. <laughs> I cannot afford much. Uh, we need to be like more alert and more careful, here. careful here. Jenny's been here not even one day. She went from like, oh yeah, let's get a house in the city. Two and a half hours away, the house is abandoned. Cows just come in willingly. They start doing things, people prey on the house. Samit is telling Jenny that she has to be careful and more alert. That, I feel sorry for her. That cannot be good to heal, like the first day back. Prime ratio was very high. Okay, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you serious? Do you want the wife still or do you want to divorce another one? Another one. Can you not, can you maybe save this information? You thought the cow was gonna make the event a little sweeter? Sweeten the deal with a cow inside the house? Really? This is, this is not how you win over your wife by telling her the crime rate in your area. We have a security guard in our apartment. Now, all we have is our gates. That's our security guard, our gate. Earlier people killed other guys. Are you serious? Are you, are you trying to... What are you trying to do? What exactly are you trying... Are you going to read the crime statistics? <laughs> statistics for India? Are you trying to drive her back home? Does this need to be said today? Just for $10. Oh my god. So yes, yeah, Samit's like, hey man, this is a great house. People die all the time. OJ Simpson's out there like, hello. I want that cow in here. This should be a lot of fun. I got a little getting even to do. And now we move on to episode six. Somehow three episodes have went past. I still haven't seen proof of the divorce, which I promised my daughters that I would as soon as I landed in India. Jenny and Samit are living together. It's been a day, maybe two, I don't know. But Jenny is now very frustrated because she hasn't seen proof of the divorce papers. And that is all she wanted to see, otherwise she was leaving. The cow, the fire, the crime rate, not enough to get her to leave. The divorce papers might be. They could still be lying to me. Sorry no no magic happened last night. I was so tired. I just I just came in here and passed out. That's fine. You don't, no magic. I hope by magic she meant like she literally pulled out a card and not sex, you know. That's I need to sit down. <clears throat> Oh, God. I just keep imagining my grandma saying things like this. It's just not good. Let's roam around. Let me show yeah. you a little bit, uh, like, an area around here. So you will feel comfortable better over here. Yeah, let me show you the place where people get... Oh, d see that? That's the blood stain from the guy who got murdered for $10. Oh, oh. That's a leg. That's a leg right there. Yeah. You look very hard. You might find a head. Who knows? So how far away are we from your parents' house right now? Two, two and a half hours. Somebody bleed right here. It's not bleed. It's oh my God, I was right. <laughs> I didn't think of... <laughs> that's, that's blood. I mean, it is a bench, but that's blood on it. That's so... I can't believe I called it. Somebody eat tobacco and spit oh. water. <laughs> It's not bleeding. How much? How much you want to bet? That's a lie. No, 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 no. That's that's just that's that's the red off the the ground. India is just very red in that area. Or oh, that not that's not a leg. That's the god of running. Don't touch it. It's got bacteria. I told you not to touch it. When am I gonna see these divorce papers? So finally they go out roaming for a day and Jenny is frustrated and she wants answers and she questions Samit who falls under pressure like 
you know, origami. He is just not someone who deals with pressure very well. He's not good in high stress situations, and he's also not good at telling the truth. So he would make a great president. I did come all the way back to India for the third time. I need to see those divorce papers. Well, this, this, and this, and this reason, and this reason, and this reason. Calm I risk. Down, calm down. Yep, so Jenny, uh, her thing is that when she starts talking, she absolutely, she, she goes from this to this. And in her time being an earthling 60 odd years, she hasn't figured out how to do that in little increments and be like, okay, I'm stressed and this is why. She starts off like this and Samit knows this. He's, he, he tells her to calm down. He usually gets her to calm down. Baby, calm down, calm down. But he's also not good at rectifying the situation. So on one hand, you got someone who stresses and overthinks. On the other hand, you got someone who tries to be calm but actually doesn't fix the situation. It's it's a recipe for a disaster, if you ask me. I was a little bit annoyed that she keep bringing up. I don't have proof for my divorce because it's very hard to get people work. Honestly, Samit, Jenny is gullible enough that you could literally write divorce on a paper and put it in her hands and she'd be like, look at this. He did it. My mans did that. Dude, you could have probably fooled... You fooled her with Michael Jones for a long time. You could get away with this. I'm not saying lie. But I'm. But you could You could stretch the truth a little bit. If you want, what we can do, we can go together and you can see how hard it is. Like, group lying and just get the paper. Not easy. So, Summit comes to a, uh, a good compromise. He says, well, it's hard to get the divorce papers, but if you want to see how hard it is and you want to see that I'm trying, let me go to court with you and then you can see firsthand. So, you'll have like an indication of how hard it is. And that ends the episode. We're on to episode seven now. The benefits of being short is you're not gonna hit your head. And she makes a short joke instantly. It wasn't a joke. She's she's genuinely, she's like, hey, you're short. You don't have to bend unlike me, which I can't. My back's broken, but not from you because you don't do anything sexually. I'm really frustrated, Summit. It's been a week since Summit promised me that we would go to his lawyer and see the divorce papers. I wish he would be on top of things and take care of business. He's always the bottom. He's a power bottom. I know this. I don't even have to. I can guess that he's a power bottom. I just know. This man would never get on top. He would never do the work. <laughs> Are you kidding me? He kind of just, okay, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. But I don't want to argue with him, so it'll be nice just to get out and have some fun. Whose damn idea was this? Wow, I've never seen this before. This is the cool part about, like, watching shows where they go and venture out into weird t territories. They go on this weird boat thing that looks like a mini house, and they start pedaling. I never pedaled a house before, but they pedal it across the seas. Maybe this is the right part for Summit to tell Jenny something. They were supposed to go to court. Doesn't look like a court. Maybe a sea court. I don't know. Maybe he wanted to take it to a basketball court for all I know, a food court, something like that. But he didn't take it to the place that she wanted to go. I'm interested to see why he brought a friend along. Maybe this will help either Jenny or Summit get insight into each other's lives. Neeraj is a cool guy. He's one of the few who's made an effort to get to know me. Why didn't you tell me he had a wife? Oh, God. Okay, well, apparently um, Summit's friend knew about Summit's wife and didn't tell Jenny. And Jenny is absolutely mad at him, which she shouldn't necessarily be because she doesn't know him that well. But at the same time, I guess she could be. The person you should be mad at is your to-be husband who didn't tell you. Everyone else is like sort of second in command. But yeah, I understand Jenny's frustration. I never meant to hurt you, but okay. I did it because I know that he really loves you. That's why you did it. It's the same thing that all the cheaters say. Why'd you cheat? It's because I love you. So why why are you why are you on top of another man? Because I love you. Why is there three more hiding behind the door? Because I love you. I'm leaving now. I asked him it many times that he should tell Jenny about his marriage life and about his wife. If it would have been other things, I never will never support him. If he did hard drugs, if he if he if he fiddled the diddles, you know what I mean? If he did this to mimes, I wouldn't support any of that. I, hey, hey, if he voted for the wrong person, I wouldn't support him. But having a wife and not telling his other partner? Nice. did wrong not to tell you about it, but just to keep this relationship. In India, male friends are very, very tight and close with each other. Yeah, unlike America, all those backstabbing bitches. Everyone uh, keeps stabbing my back. 
people from every other country stabbing backs. Indian guys, close, homies, tight-knit. Everyone's on the cricket team. In any other country, if you go to Guatemala, those boys hate each other, right? Jenny knows, she's a world traveler. She's been to many countries, like India, many. So I understand he was supporting his friend, but still, you know, I would rather have found out about it for sure. I'm really glad that he came back. This is one of the things, Jenny, that your relationship person has to tell you. It's something that you have to hear from them. Because if you hear it from someone else, it's just not, it's not them on them to tell you. And the story goes deeper than that. If someone was just like he's married and gave you no other context, then you'd probably just leave without even listening to what he had to say. So it, it probably had to come from Summit for it to make sense and for you to forgive and move on. The right thing was done. It's, it's a hard decision, but you can't blame his friends for that. They're just, they're trying to support you, you know? I know it's a tough situation, but it's, he wasn't cheating. He was, he hated his wife, I think. Back, because I really want you guys to be together. So I understand that you're also going through a divorce, right? I am, yes. Oh, good conversation. Very good conversation, Stato, Jenny. Jesus. <clears throat> I understand that you're going through a divorce. Is that correct? Yeah, mm hmm You like that? Does, is this an Indian thing? Everyone goes through a divorce once in their life. It's like love, but the opposite is that. She asked it like it was like, how's the weather? She's like, looked up. She's like, how's your divorce? Is it good? You like it? Oh. It's been four years. Huh? Four years. Why four years? She's asking a lot of money and we are fighting with each other in court. God damn, have they heard of prenups in that country? My God, four years and you still can't get a divorce. Imagine hating someone so much that you stay married to them out of spite. It sounds like the relationship my parents had. What do you mean by that? That was too real. Oh my God, I gotta stop whispering. Well, his is not gonna take four years. Not if he's paying. I need to see the paperwork. Let us fix the apartment, like a, a house, whatever we need. How long is that? Yeah, this is, I've gotta be honest, the priorities in the situation seem pretty messed up. I will grant that it's fair that Jenny feels very frustrated about the fact he might, you know, technically still be married to another woman, but that money could be used to build a good life for them first could be used for an investment to then make more money to then pay for the divorce i don't really know the situation i know that jenny wants to feel like he's a free man but as you can see he's spending all the time with her technically if she just you know gets a better situation you can't have both at this point you want a better house or you want this man to say legally he's divorced because in his mind he checked out a long time ago with that woman i'm just saying jenny you gotta it's the sophie's choice here but instead of Sophie, it's Summit. Summit's choice. <laughs> when we get the time, we can go together. So you're gonna promise me that she, you're gonna take her tomorrow to the lawyer and show her the paper. Bro, if he can't even promise her anything, how is he gonna promise you? You're not giving Summit the sloppy toppy that Jenny is, okay? You're not giving him the incentive. He's not promising you. He, can, he can't promise himself anything, okay? Mm -hmm. okay. We will go to, uh, tomorrow, mm -hmm. talk with the lawyer, Get the pill and was Somehow it works due to the insurmountable pressure from Jenny and his friends. And it's like, tomorrow we're going to see that divorce lawyer. We're going to get that paperwork. We're going to sign it. I'm going to be a newly divorced man, baby. I don't know if it's going to work. He might lie again, but we'll see. And that ends the episode. We're up to episode eight. Today, Summit's taking me to meet his lawyer, and I want to ask him some questions because I still haven't seen proof of the divorce. Is he going to have any paperwork? Oh my God, woman. I... If the divorce lawyer didn't have the paperwork, then who would? She's like asking in between going like, you know, it would be weird to ask the person who flies the plane before you get on it if you've landed. Do you know what I mean, Jenny? You can't ask, are we there yet, before you've boarded the plane. You have to actually get to the place before you can ask those questions. He said he's going to take you there. He can't already have it done. I find it very odd that he can't show he's applied for a divorce. It's not the way we do things in America. If you go to court, you always get a receipt, some sort of document from the court. No, I know that Jenny every now and again says, in America, this is how we do things. And the irony on her is always lost that she seems to forget that she's not in America somehow. And then maybe they don't do things the same way. I don't know if you've noticed, but the country is quite different. But I, you know, I, you know, all power to her for continuously saying in America, this is how we do things while being in another country. This is the classic American thing. In America, we don't lack divorces. I mean, we do, we lack receipts in America.
But in India, people don't. In India, we like our cows in between two buns. In India, cows are in houses taking shits. Sounds like a comedy routine from the 60s, man. I want lawyer to explain her everything. I do understand why she keep on asking for the paperwork. Is the guy. <laughs> why, why every person who helps them has to be so fat? Sorry, but like her financial advisor looked like he ate three, four thousand croissants. This guy looked like he ate three, four million croissants. These guys look like they belong in chairs. Guy who handles my divorce case. You know the situation exactly what happened. How does divorce work here in India? Like everywhere else, you don't like it, you get divorced. I don't know what he's gonna say. Divorce can take many times. Divorce. You have to die before you do it. It's Indian tradition. Two and five years. Maybe more. In this case, both parties are aggregated. Oh, his is different. Yes. Jenny goes to the lawyer to ask questions. The lawyer says, divorce happens when you one of them dies. It takes between two and two million years, any time in between. And then Jenny's like, absolutely like Pikachu face. And then he's like, well, in this case, everyone's agreed, so we'll get divorced tomorrow. So he just pulled, uh, he did a rug pull basically for nothing. Why is it so hard for him to get his document? First motion, we can so publicly. Uh, written in Hindu Marriage Act, this is our privacy. So apparently in India, I guess from what I'm understanding is that uh, once you file for divorce, you still have to wait half a year. So I'm not sure if that time is for you and your wife to think about all the sex you had and maybe you'd get back together. I'm not really sure why it takes so long, but apparently you can't get straight away divorced. If you hate someone, you have to hate them for like half a year. It's 180 days of hate at least. Uh, I guess that's what we're doing there. Once he's divorced, we have to register the marriage. There's a notice that's sent out. It will go to his permanent address, which is his permanent parent. address. They say no. Okay, so again, this divorce lawyer also starts answering questions about marriage. Jenny asked the pivotal question, after Samit gets divorced, can we get married? And the problem with the whole situation is that the marriage documents go to the residential address of where he was living, which is his parents. So his parents are going to see the mail and basically say, you can't marry Jenny. What I'm seeing here is two options. One, you could just live with your parents and check the mail every day. They'll think you're like the best son. You're like, I, I'll get the mail, guys. Don't worry. Or two, you can you could just move to America where all the shit would not happen. I'm not really sure what else you can do. I've never heard the, th the thing that if someone else takes your mail, you can't get married. If they say you can't. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. But wow. They have boundaries. 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 Yeah. They have to have a valid reason. What could they possibly come up with? White. Old, old white. Old and white. That didn't happen back in my day. White, old, hag. Looks like Harry Potter's grandmother. Looks like Christina Applegate if she was a zombie. I don't know. Are these val is this valid reasons or what? I haven't done anything wrong to their son. What? <laughs> Yet. Yet. Or you know, you know, when once Jenny gets married, she's going to give it up the... I'm not going to say that, but... She hasn't done anything to the son yet. She's gonna rock his world once she marries him. What, I took his virginity then? What? Uh, I was right. <laughs> Since I was born to this earth, mm -hmm. I haven't slept with any woman before. I am purely virgin. I didn't think I was right. I didn't, I didn't. I'm, I don't know what's worse. He was 30 something year old virgin. I guess there's nothing wrong with that. His virginity got taken someone twice his age. This week, I was on one moon, so I slept with my wife. For now, I'm not a virgin. I guess there's nothing wrong with that. But did virginity got taken someone older than his mom, I guess. I need, I need to sit down. They will object. Yeah, I know they that. will object. Smith is doing everything that he can to make this divorce happen. But the biggest thing weighing on me is... Submit when he got on top of you that one time to lose your virginity, right? For now, I'm not a virgin. He is, can his parents stop us from getting married? Will they stop us? If they do, I'll be devastated. Think about this. Jenny's kid lost her virginity before her man's. Did you faint? Because I did. No, oh, anyway, I'm still recovering from that knowledge, but uh, they finally go home after realizing the information is terrible and that the parents might have a big problem with their marriage and how are they gonna actually get past this. And they're now at home in their beautiful 
faraway abandoned house trying to figure that out. My friends are coming with their wives. I want to see who is this mysterious lady. Even their wives are so much excited to meet. So yes, the next day, Jenny gets to meet Samit's friends and their wives. Everyone's going to meet everyone. They're going to finally meet Jenny. Some of Samit's friends have met them, but not many of the wives have. For me, I don't know what kind of reaction people is going to give up when Jenny and Samit walk holding each other's hands. It will look like grandmom and grandson is walking. What the hell grandma and grandson walk like? She's white. I'm not saying you can't be two different colors, but this looks like a Michael Jackson video that aged poorly. What are you talking about? It don't matter if you're black or old white. There's many reasons Indian people might look at these two, but they don't care and they're happily in love. So, you know, let them look. They'll see what they need to. True love in its weirdest form. Hi, Jenny. Hi. We're the wives. What happened to your wife? To be honest with you, my wife uh, is gay. She doesn't like this relationship. Oh, that's, that's, Okay. I've said it many times. If you don't like us and don't agree with us, you don't want to see us together, you can stay over there. I don't know, and uh, his wife was also coming, but she died of hepatitis. But she's not well, like. Oh, Jesus, I'm like three for three today. She's sick? Yeah. Sick of you. <laughs> not you, sick of him. Just hearing this makes me feel bad for Jenny. She's not doing anything. She is who she is. It's kind of like really sad that the, the husband showed up and they were like willing to support Summit, but like their wives weren't. Jenny didn't do anything to deserve that. And she should be given the benefit of the doubt. Even if I may not like someone or I may not agree, I'll still go there and maybe put all my judgments aside. I have to really be persuaded either way. I don't have a negative or positive opinion of a person until they can persuade me to think either way of them. Just on pretenses, you just cannot judge people. And it's it's sad that she's being judged on how she looks or her age. Yeah, you can joke around about it, but real talk, like this is a guy who loves a girl, this is a girl who loves a guy. That's that's it. It's sad that people go beyond that sometimes. I do feel sorry for her, and I think she's really strong for not only putting up with it, but still continuing to love this guy, despite knowing all of these negative influences that she has. She's stronger mentally than she thinks she is. I'm sorry. It's okay. But after all, you are my friend. I am. I will be always there for you, dude. That's what I want. I will always be there for you, dude. When you are always there for me. It's like six Indian friends. Deepak, Dirud, Raj, Shanti, Shanit, Jalal. Oh God, this just, I don't know the names. But imagine Indian friends. I would so watch that. I'm just worried about your parents. Reaction. It's not like I'm taking him out of India and away from his family. That's so true. Oh my god. Actually, that's actually a really good point. Jenny is willing to come here and live with these traditions. It's not like she was like, come to America, live with me, become a cowboy. Yeehaw. If that doesn't show her commitment to this man, then I don't know what will. How many Americans will uproot their life, leave their family to come and live with another man because his D game is so strong? <laughs> Because she loves him. After meeting Jenny, undoubtedly she is a great person, but he's doing a childish thing. You cannot make decision of your own. This is India. Well, that's actually the most childish bullshit that I've ever heard in my life. Saying to someone that they're childish for making decisions on their own isn't childish. That's them being a trailblazer, especially in a country that implores you to not make decisions of your own. How do you ever move forward as a society and as people? That feels like the absolute antiquated thing to say. The Heroes of India made decisions on their own to actually move forward in society. It's like Robert Frost's thing, the part that's traveled. That's, that's, that's part of life. I'm not saying Sumit is like the Gandhi of his generation. I'm just saying that this guy is standing up for what he believes in despite everything in India. And it's not childish to make your own decisions in any country. You have to stand up for what you believe in. And if that's love, then that's love. If it's Jenny, a 60 year old lady that you absolutely want to bang every night, go for it. It's fantastic. It is going too hard for... Oh, it's going hard, all right, man. This guy is going hard in the paint for Jenny. And I'll tell you what, she likes it like that. Jenny and Summit to survive here. I am really genuinely scared and worried that Summit will be pressured to go back and live with his parents. And that is how the episode ends. We're on to episode 10 now. There's about 20 episodes. Do you see how much of a deep dive this is? Please, if you haven't subscribed already, I'm gonna slap you in the ass. That, it's not a compliment. My new biggest concern is Smith's family. So tonight, Smith's taking me to have dinner with his brother Amit. Ah, yes. So tonight, Smith is making uh, waves into his family. He's slowly integrating Jenny into his family by having dinner with 
um, his brother, Amit Summit. They had another one that would just be called Armpit. Sorry. Uh, but listen, they're having dinner. It's a good. It's good. He's meeting the family. She's meeting the family. Yeah. Ask about the divorce. Ask, ask, make it less awkward. Ask about his penis size. Do something. Have you been to this place before? <laughs> ah, that's worse. It's a nice place. I've never seen these glasses. I don't. Me neither. It's very heavy. Yeah, it is. It's good conversation. This is really riveting conversation. This is... Summit, maybe you should break the ice or just break ice on top of one of the heads of them. <sighs> Please say something. Big thing is the age factor between you guys. This can impact on our dignity, our social circle and society. Yeah, so dignity, social circle, society, all the stuff that when you are growing up causes anxiety and fear of being judged, accepted. It's the human experience to want to be accepted, but it's also the fallacy that you need to care about what other people think of you. The less you care, the more free you are. What a what a crazy concept that is. That doesn't mean you get to do anything in life, but at the same time, if you really truly believe in something and you're willing to stand up and be passionate for it, I think enough people will see, understand the cause and back you up. I've always believed in that. And, and I hate to see it be such a big factor in this relationship because truly, if that wasn't a factor, they'd probably have a very pure and wholesome relationship, which they do. But um, it's always an issue and it, it sucks. It's all, but what will society say? But what will society think? And it's like, it's like your happiness. She just said what I said in a way better way than I said it. I thought I was poetic. Fuck society, way better. She's like Flavor Flav. Don't you want your brother to be happy too? I do want to. Everybody wants everybody to be happy. My parents want me to be happy, but they want them to be happy. Can someone put that on a shirt and submit's face? Everyone wants everyone to be happy. That's some of the most gangster shit I ever heard in my life. Should go to a prison and just be like, hey, everyone wants everyone to be happy, dude. Everyone wants to. Summit for president, 1935. We're going back in time, baby. I do respect the emotions, both of your emotions. I don't like making parents feel bad about this. How to fix this thing, because I'm not going anywhere. You know what should have happened in this video? For like, the whole two, three, eight hours, however long 90 Day Fiance lasts, they should just have Will Smith's parents just don't understand playing. They don't understand that us kids are going to make some mistakes. Throughout the whole episode, that would be just absolute icing on the cake. And then maybe at the end, Will Smith can slap some sense into some of them. Uh oh I personally feel they should talk to conclude all this. If I'm going to meet my parents, I feel afraid. They will say that I need to choose my parents or Jerry. So at the end of the conversation with the brother, basically he says that ideally you guys all need to meet, Jenny included, and something needs to happen to conclude this whole thing. There's got to be an outcome, which is right. Something's got to give in this situation. Summit is scared that his parents are going to make him choose either them or Jenny. The brother is scared and Jenny is scared she's not going to be chosen. It's going to be a wild conclusion. We're not there yet, but we're getting there. I kind of just choose one on another. Like I'm loving Jenny, I will marry Jenny. And at the same time, I don't want to lose my family. And in Jenny's position, by the way, she doesn't want to be the one who causes Summit to lose his family. So she's put in a tough position because all she wants to do is be loved and love him. It makes for an interesting third act, which we're going to get into soon. But this is what the whole thing is. Summit has to talk to his family. He has to get someone to make a decision. And it's up to him to do that. The person who cannot make a decision is going to have to. I'll talk to them. Let's see if we can figure out something. I only want one thing. Drugs. Just everyone to be happy. Same thing. Paint. Yeah, paint. No. Paint. Paint. New episode starts off with paint. Finally, they're doing a home improvement like Tim Allen. Tim Allen, by the way, fun fact, used to sell coke from the back of his trunk car. So Buzz Lightyear from Disney used to sell coke. Kids, you can do it. We thought that we just need to do, like, uh, give a kind of facelift. We'll just try to paint main areas. Yep, that's a good facelift. You only paint the areas that people want to see. The bathroom, up there where the splatter is. Maybe the window, painted black, I guess. What? Okay, well maybe if we add like some sort of an accent wall in the house. Is an accent wall just like a, hello? Like, is that what, what's an accent wall? Interior, exterior wall that can have a different color. Oh, that's weird. All right. 
give your eyes something to focus on when you walk in instead of everything that's wrong. With Why don't you get a painting? That way, if you don't want to have the wall look a certain different color, you could take the painting away. I'm sure there's someone in India who paints, you know? The house. And what colors did you choose? I choose a uh, brown one. Oh yes, the best color of any wall, brown. Same color as your ship. That's always a good color. Why don't you pick another really good color that livens the place up like black? All the walls in the house could be black. It looks like total darkness even during the day. Why don't you just look like a PTSD flashback at this point? Mm and uh, marigold and red. Oh, all great colors that you could use for painting a Van Gogh, but maybe not the house. Hmm. Have you ever painted before? Not really, like, uh, like at once. Interesting time to be painting a house when you've only painted once in your life before. Weird time to be doing this. But all right, Summit is turning into an artist and painting the house a weird mix of brown. Oh my God. He's Indian though. They use their hands for a lot of things, so he doesn't care. Even if he was not Indian, I think most people use their hands for lots of things. I'm not sure that's only an Indian thing that you use your hands. I've seen people of all cultures, religions, and races use their hands, but thank you. A very astute observation, Jenny. I got a call from my brother, like I met yesterday. I wish you would get a call from someone who would arrest you for painting like that. Are you kidding me? Is this how you're gonna do this? Is it gonna be an abstract home? One of those weird homes that you can sell for millions of dollars? Is Banksy gonna come in and live there? What is that? Is that why we're painting the wall? Because your parents are, are your parents coming here? I don't think he would be painting the wall if his parents were coming there. I think his parents are not coming there. That's why he's painting the wall. I don't think anybody's coming there ever again. Even the cow is probably gonna be like, moo, thanks. I'm not doing this. I want to go there and talk with them in my parents' house. You don't think your parents will try to like trap you there or keep you there? Not after they see the wall. They're gonna disown him. Just send a picture of the wall. Be like, this is your son. You really want him to be your son? Then they'll be like, hell no, you take him. I am worried for Samit. I don't like it when he has to go to his parents' house. Last time he got kidnapped, like he was in some sort of Home Alone movie or something. I don't know how your own people can kidnap you. I'm sure it's a thing, but my goodness, the drama in the series is like literally like the bold and the beautiful or like an Indian Bollywood movie, just in reverse. Instead of the guy rescuing the girl, it's the white girl who saves the guy. So like an American movie, I guess. I think if a real painter came over here and saw this, he'd probably pass out. <laughs> I think if anybody came there and saw this, they would pass out. I don't I don't know what the hell that was or why y'all decided to do it, but this is very uh... loving that two of you agreed to paint a wall that shittily. What the hell is even that? I don't even think that's a word, but wow. Have you ever seen a house that had no value still go down in value? Jenny has tourist with us, so he have to leave the country every six months. So after painting that amazing house that only a mother couldn't love, they go out again to the streets to wonder and Samit says Jenny has to leave every six months because she's not married to him so she has to constantly leave the country because she's not a permanent resident there. She wants to get married so she doesn't have to do that and it's a very valid reason for her to get married. I suppose it would be very taxing physically, mentally and also money wise to like constantly be leaving and coming back. So they have to formulate a plan to try and get her married but it's going to be against Samit's parents wishes. Will you talk about the first time you met Jenny? She came out. Ah, oh, finally, we get to see Samit's parents. I might have seen them in the first one, I don't remember, but in the second one, they're much more prevalent. The producer asked about the first time that Jenny and Samit met, and their parents actually knew about it. The funny thing is, their parents liked Jenny, but they didn't know that Jenny was romantically involved with Samit. Things got a bit strange. They saw grandma giving a little too many smooshies, and then they were like, holy crap, what is this? In the year, I think it was 2013. He told us that she's his, she's his India Facebook friend, and she wanted to visit India. You didn't find that little suspicious Facebook friend, 50 something years old, comes to India. Every now and again, you hear the bed rocket. You didn't, nothing, nothing. All right. <laughs> Yeah, not only did you show her a lot of love, so did your son. Too much love, in fact. We were sleeping and he was with Jenny. Yeah, I realized they are having some relationship. Yeah, he found out when he when he saw her taking his virginity. Do you remember? He got his virginity taken by this woman. Oh God. Uske saath galat relation mein rahi hai. Beta bana leti Sumit ko. Oh my god, she did treat him like the son. I'm sure they do that kink stuff, but she also got treated him like daddy, you know what I mean? So... <sighs> oh... 
hard image to get out of my head, but carry on. I want him happy, but not with a lady. Yeah, right. <laughs> I want him happy, but not with a lady. So it's gay. Is that what you're talking about? Or what, what is this? More than double of his eyes. Oh, sorry. He just didn't want an old lady. Honestly, this dude might want him with a guy rather than an old lady. I don't know what his prerogative is, but you want your son to be happy, but with a wife that's more appropriate. I get it, but I don't. It was my dream to play with my grandchildren. Yes, my ass are dreams. <laughs> This is some kind of crazy guilt tripping when your parents say you smashed my dreams. I hope they realize they have another son who's getting married to a woman the age you guys like and probably will have children. So you, you will have grandchildren unless your younger son's infertile. Don't blame him for that. But like, that's mean. Like, Samit, he's just living his life. Stop. He didn't, he didn't smash your dreams. He's, the only thing he's smashing is Jenny. So at the end of the conversation, Samit's parents say they will not let him marry Jenny. Samit is going to meet them to try and convince them. Fireworks are gonna fly because this is just gonna be a heated conversation, I can already tell. Uh, what do you call it when a rock meets a hard place? It's not from a porno. So, finally, Samit's in the house. He says hello to his parents. They sit down and hopefully they'll be able to have a civil conversation. No! There's flowers in the background. Everything's happy. He's wearing a flannel shirt. He looks like a, someone who chops wood, I guess. Your Jenny, Mina. So, Samit, surprisingly, and, you know, to his credit, straight up says, Jenny is part of, like, us. Now. She's she's with me. It's some gen. Gen meat. Whatever. Ugh, whatever. I'm not changing that. And of course, Samit's mom is very staunch on her decisions. Samit's dad is a bit more relaxed in his stance. He, he goes along with Samit's mom maybe a bit too much. But Samit's mom is very, very set in her ways, ideals and ideas. They cannot be changed. And it causes a very big problem in Samit's life because he is unable to get her to think any differently about the situation. I find it interesting that the parents worry way more about the age gap than like the difference in culture or the fact that she's American. I kind of thought that that would be an issue, but they seem to have almost no problem with that, which is somewhat refreshing. But also at the same time, the age thing being a problem is just equally as depressing. So uh, man, I'm, I feel sorry that Samit has to fight so much for this. He's like Rocky. If Rocky instead of Italian was Indian, 10, 20 inches shorter at least, and, and couldn't fight also couldn't never run up that hill he would die but but it's like rocky actually it's not age difference you know the age of jenny is i think more than double of your age for indian yeah. society can then he is such is acceptable nahi hai. yeah yeah again to put it into perspective when samit was one years old jenny was 31 years old crazy and she looked at that baby and she's like one day when it's legal i'm gonna bang that baby not as a baby it's gonna grow not that much but I'll just leave. I'll just leave. That's what she said. If it doesn't matter in other countries, then why we have to stick to that? That's what R. Kelly said when he went to like the worst country. If it doesn't matter in your country, why should it matter here? And then he proceeded to piss on people. So sometimes that's wrong. But in Samit's case, acceptable. It's true. Like Akon said, nobody want to see us together, but it doesn't, it don't matter. No, because I got you. And we all know Akon is great because he built so many homes with power in that country. Sorry, the continent of Africa. A little late. I'm losing my marbles. Remember guys, if Akon did it, you can too. Right, Samit? We cannot change our society. Okay, fuck society. You, you're wrong, Samit. I'm with the parents now. I switch sides. You suck. We are part of it. This pair of legs is a little bit of a thorn. Exactly. A mango tree can't stop bearing lemons. A whale can't be a sexy and be on a Vogue cover of a Vogue magazine. Drake can't really be black. He's not allowed that one. You know what I mean? Lots of things can't happen, and that's true. But I'll tell you what can happen. An old lemon tree can get with a young lemon tree. Because age doesn't matter when you're a tree. Do you understand? Because I don't. I, I hate when parents do this. I hate when your parents use you as a guilt trap when they're like, I raised you. Absolutely. I'm always like, you know, agree. I would love to pay you back my whole life if I could. But at the same time, it's not a prison sentence. I don't owe you anything because I wasn't asked to be here. I didn't, I didn't know that this was going to happen. And for all the stuff that you've done for me, it's not that I need to repay you back. That's not what parenting is. If and when I hope I have kids, I'm never going to look at them and say, I did this for you. You need to do X, Y, and Z for me. All I ever want to do if I have kids is make sure that they are happy in this world. I just want to be there for them. I don't want to take. I just want to 
will give. And I, and I wish more parents would, would not hold that against people. I just, I don't like this. They've clearly got Samit in the palm of their hands. And whenever they want, they just pull him back. And he knows he can't say no to them because they're right. They did raise him and he is in debt, but like he shouldn't have to feel like he can't do what he wants because of it. It's sad. So then the parents and Samit start talking and they're like, you know, 20,000 is all we have. But on the other hand, I have to take Samit's side with this because, because he didn't want to get married. It was an arranged marriage and he got divorced because he wasn't happy. So it's sort of like they made the mistake, they need to pay for it, but they're still holding that against him, which just sucks. This dude just wants to be happy with an old prune lady. Like, let him be happy. There's, there's nothing wrong. He's not hurting nobody. She's not hurting no one. They're just two beautiful people walking around in the sunlight, enjoying India. It's fine. There's plenty more to worry about in the world than these two. They're not hard harming anyone. Oh my god, Jesus Christ in hell. The hell, dude? This turned into Shah Rukh Khan Bollywood movie. Excuse me, can someone get Summit in Bollywood? A movie called I Did It For Jenny. It's the story of a guy who catfished an old woman into loving him. And, and it's a very powerful movie. It stars Shah Rukh Khan as Jenny. And it stars Amitabh Bachchan as also Jenny in an older role. Summit plays himself. <laughs> This is better than Bollywood drama right now. The passion he has in his face when he's talking about how they screwed him over. You can't make this is Oscar winning. This guy can act. He needs to be in Bollywood. I don't know what he's doing working at call centers. Oh my God, Samit, this is fantastic. And having a relation with a lady more than double of his age, it's a different thing. Think of it like this, Samit's dad. Think of it, instead of him having one great relationship with a lady twice his age, he's having two relationships with a woman similar age to him. He just has so much love that he could give it to the same person twice. If she was 30, he'd give it to her. She's 60, he's just giving it to her twice. That's how loving your son is. He's got enough love for two people combined into one. Think of it like that. Maybe it'll be easier for you to digest. I try. I was the one who was suffering. I mean, he's getting so hectic, his hair is moving up and down, like he's wearing a wig. I, I actually want to talk on that, like he says, random people in society, which is absolutely true, isn't it? Isn't that what society is? Just a group of random people. And when you really break it down, how much do those people influence your lives? Because you got to think about it. Your circle is close. Who are people that matter to you? Your close friends and family. Nobody else. If you meet someone down the street and you do something embarrassing, they might look at you for a minute. In your whole life, are you going to ever run into that person again? Probably not. So if those people don't matter, you need to do the things that are closest to you because you matter the most in the long run to yourself. And that's essentially what Summit is trying to say and what he should be saying. He then goes on to say something really sad, that he was so unhappy in the marriage that he tried to himself. And that is just not, like if, if you're the parents of Summit and you hear that, you need to realize maybe you made a mistake because how bad is it to hear your son say that? Because he wanted you to be happy, he got into this relationship. It's a very sad moment. You don't want anyone to feel like that. Committing suicide. Sounded like he said McDonald. McDonald's. But he's like, why can't I choose both? That which is McDonald's slogan. McDonald's. Just get the nuggets and the fucking cheeseburger. That's that's what I grew up with. That was their slogan back then. Okay, so Samit goes to his parents. His parents cry. He cries. Everyone's crying like a Bollywood movie, screaming. Lots of stuff happening. And uh, they end up basically saying time will tell. Time's not gonna tell. Someone has to make a decision. You can't just time will tell only when someone dies, either Jenny or the mom. I don't know, but that's not the thing we want. Anyway, he goes back and he tells Jenny what happened between the family. And Jenny doesn't take it as well as you think. I think I was trying to explain them how much I love you, but that they don't even want to listen. Sometimes she looks like his wife, other times she looks like his English teacher. Could be both. Because of the age gap thing, where do you think you guys are standing after 10 years? Like. Is she gonna grow old? She's not growing young. She, <laughs> she's. I think she's like 60 now. 10 years, she'll be 70. 10 more years, she'll look like Mick Jagger's stunt double. I'm in a lot better health than both of your parents are. I am a perfectly healthy person, very good, and they have health problems. So if anyone's gonna die, it'll be your parents. <laughs> Sorry, but they will. Society, like, 
They don't pay your bills for you. You, you guys take care of yourself. So why care what they say, what they think? Yes, yeah, 100%. Like Summit and Jenny both been saying it. Absolutely correct. Society don't pay the bills. You do. Haters don't pay the bills. You do. There's only so much that you need to take from someone who's not going to help you put food on the table for your family and your people. There's only so much you should ever let in before you realize it doesn't really matter. Both of them are right in their, in their assessment of how society means so little in the grand scheme of things. As long as you're doing stuff within bounds of legality, you should be fine. Telling me everything, like if you call any of their family members, ask them nobody gonna support your relation because the age difference is... What the fuck is this man saying? Did he, did I miss something? I'm sorry, I zoned out for like half a second and he started like doing one of those things when you need to fill a word limit. I going to do very well in the times of the change and some people don't even talk about two, three things maximum and how you want it. I'll tell it. It's not going to be good, but it will be great some days, but not on some days, only on Sundays. Nothing made sense there. That's it. They just need to be happy for you. Like, that's what I've been saying all along. That's all we want. I'm just happy that they're finally listening to you. They're not. They're not. So Jenny misunderstands the situation somewhat. Don't really know what exactly she thought she heard. Everyone was confused by what Summit just said, but she seemed to think this was a good positive direction move. The family doesn't support Summit's decision to even be with Jenny. Jenny for some reason thinks they do, and Summit is not really explaining that. So this conversation was useless to everyone, and no parties won. Okay, so it's the next day. Summit is finally going to court. I guess it's been six months. Time really flies in like this 90 Day Fiance. The actual thing when we get to episode three has been 10 years. So it's a very long process, but it's been six months. He's going to get his divorce papers, hopefully. And Jenny is wearing an okay shirt. Her fashion sense is wild for someone who was born in the 1400s. Still uh, thinking maybe they will put some allegation or try to blackmail me for more money and cause me delay in my divorce. Just a casual day in India. They might blackmail me. They might shake my hand. I don't know. I'm going to put my hand out. They might high five me. They might break it. <laughs> So yeah, then Summit and his friend drive him to court. His friend's like uh, sort of telling him, hyping him up. He's got really good friends. Uh, and I always thought that you could judge like a person by how good the company they keep is. And Summit keeps some good company. His friends always want the best for him. So he must be a good guy. Like his friends are constantly like on his side. Even more so than he, sometimes he's like unhappy to be in a relationship and they're like, be happy. Like so let this finish, then you can convince them. Yeah. I'm sorry, I just want to pause real quick. I hope they both suffer. I don't, I'll tell you why. If you pause on the car scene, you'll see a bottle of water behind the both of them. Whose water is that? Has anybody ever done this for water? You guys got cups at the front, because cup holders. Wrong. I don't know why I'm so mad at it, but I hate it. Nobody's sitting in the back seat. That's like putting a steering wheel in the boot of a car. What the hell is the point? So, at the court, Summit meets his dad, who's gathered the money from his friend's family and other life sources to pay for the divorce. They're going to end it real soon, and he's finally going to be free from his ex-wife, who was his arranged marriage thing. Divorce is done. Divorce? Yeah, it's done. Finally, I'm free. Yeah. Finally, after six months or maybe a year or however, the divorce is done. Have you ever seen someone so happy to get a divorce? It looked like they won the lotto. It looked like he won game seven of the NBA finals. He's like, yeah, never see that bitch again. Kobe. Outside of the courthouse, everyone has a cup of chai and they share a laugh before things get really serious between Summit and his dad. This is what for friends are. This is what for friends are. And like I'm planning like to pay the money back. Now. Yeah. You have to do. Well, that's a very unsweet moment. Thought it was a tender moment. Everyone was laughing and he's like, I, I will pay you back. And his father's like, yeah, yeah, motherfucker, you will. I'm not dying until you do, bitch. That's really less savory than I thought it was. But anyway, his father then complains about how he hasn't paid him any money. It just happened, but anyway. He has not paid me anything, but he's giving me promises and promises again and again. How can he pay me back? Just yeah, well, he doesn't work. It cannot complete your dreams. She is the one like I'm loving her since a long time. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> what a weird <laughs> I didn't expect that. The dad's like, listen, you can't, if you stay at home with her, you're not going to accomplish your dreams. And he replies, she's the one that I've been loving for a long time. What a reply is that? Like, you guys want to make old people sex tape? People would be into that. No, 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 no. Interracial old couple. Well, one's young, one's old. Wait, 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 wait. 
Submit, you should do, you should get on the hub, buddy. I think that might work for you. You don't think it's bad? You don't think, think any, anything wrong in it? Age gap, I understand, but I did marry to someone. Who... Age gap, wage gap, probably page gap. Their reading level is different, I don't know. Chibi, you have seen only one girl. God damn. I learned new things about this man at the worst times. I learned 20 minutes into this that he was a virgin until she took it away. Now, through his dad, I'm learning that he's only ever been with one girl and she happens to be an old lady. I'm not saying that Jenny's not the cream of the crop, but the crop probably like, you know, ripened a long time ago in her. I'm not saying you should explore your options, but maybe at least date one girl, other, like someone closer to your age. Maybe you like it more. How are you gonna know? Damn it. I don't know Summit only dated her. This guy's gangster. He got married to one goal didn't have sex with her fuck the granny it's, it's a crazy life bro she's the one who was supported me and still supporting me in every aspect of life you can say that like financially sexually you don't do that do you dad morally morally ethically or in any other fancy way i'm gay straight like physically in yeah, there it is there it is you, you and mom don't support me physically you guys don't she supports me like underwear to my balls do you do that no you don't dad you don't get on your knees and you know what she's got bad knees so she doesn't come up for days oh great heavens i'm just saying get it while you can you know about your mother you're not going to accept it at any cost and me also we will stop you legally. Well, so that conversation ends in the weirdest, most abrupt, awful way. After Samit's dad pays for Samit to get the divorce, he then says, I'm pretty much gonna sue you right back if you marry her. As one problem ends, another begins. Samit's life in a nutshell. But anyway, she goes to tell Jenny, and Jenny's happy, but then some crazy stuff happens. We enjoy each other last night. Oh, brother! Uh, it's the next day, and apparently they had sex last night. So after Samit stood up for me against his parents... You got horny and you guys did it. I wanted to show him how proud and happy I was. It was good, like I like it. I'm glad someone did. I'm making love was me. Hey, 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 hey. No need to tell me. Oh God, who's the virgin here? You or me? <laughs> it could be either of us, bro. Damn, I'm, I'm, I need a drink. I got, you got a drink? Where's the soju? Oh God. Yeah, man, making love is passionate. You know when Drake sang Passion Fruit? He watched these two first. Wow. Now she can totally dominate being like- Fire! Oh my god, dude. Do I need to know about your kinks? Do I? She dominates you? Did I? You know, I could have guessed that. Because you like the mom. Kind of thing. That's what I like. Yeah, I thought so. I got something for you. Please not crotchless panties. Please. Please, please, please. What is the watch? <laughs> That's a small watch. So I got you a ring. Wow. A cock ring? That's disgusting. Oh my god. You guys just did it. But I thought, like, uh, we're gonna do a ceremony for that. Oh, it's a finger ring. Damn it, I didn't mean a finger ring. Oh God, just end it. Oh my goodness. So anyway, after the beautiful lovemaking and domination session that we had to hear about, uh, Jenny gives Summit a present, promising herself to Summit, good promise, and he doesn't want to put the ring on, or he does it reluctantly saying, I thought we were going to get married later on, and she gets angry. Summit is initially like thinking it's playful, but she's actually angry, and it causes an awkward moment between the two. I don't think that it was a time for a ring, because I'm not divorced, and a ring is very important. Wait, I thought he was divorced, because he called her and said he was divorced, finally, and then pumped his foot. Did we not go through that? What happened? What? Did... What? Are we back in time? Uh, it's a kind of promise ring, so we promise in front of everyone, not just in the best. Oh, so an engagement. Yeah, no, no, Would, people do that in other countries. That's not just a bed thing. There's only two places you have rings. Boxing and on the finger. So the next day, things are supposedly going well, until Samit says this about his divorce. I have to go to the court to, like, take care of him. All the criminal cases uh, that my wife uh, filed against me. Oh, and Samit is getting blackmailed again. This time his wife is taking vengeance on him for cooking the fish badly, I think. Maybe it's his wall painting skills, but yeah, she's not holding up with the blackmail. I'm absolutely baffled as to how people can just blackmail other people in this country and it's okay, but everyone's very nonchalant about it. Can you imagine being blackmailed and you're like, damn, this fish needs more salt. About as salty as my wife. <laughs> She's blackmailing me for, uh, like, extortion. She's extorting me for millions. One of my lawyer friends 
them don't take it leniently because the charges which they put against me is a very serious matter. Yes, so how are they going to prove any of this? Just by the way, your lawyer friend should, unless Indian courts don't need evidence and they just guess things, I, I feel like your lawyer friend should tell you, you'll be all right. I don't know if they have reasonable doubt in India or just like, honestly, you look guilty. Honest, I think you might do it. You did it. If they don't withdraw, then what? Then I have to fight. Charges you filed against me is like... Ugly. Uh, mental torture. That's way... Oh my god, what? <laughs> mental torture. He keeps coming in and walking in front of the TV. I'm like, oh my god, I'm getting migraines. She's claiming uh, to get $500 a month hmm? as a monthly maintenance. What? You can't... I just don't understand in what place you could claim physical anything, have no evidence, and people are like, yeah, this... So it's submit, so it seems legit. Submit, legit. I'm hoping that she will withdraw. Oh, dude, the only thing she's withdrawing is money from your bank account at this point. I've just never heard of this extortion method before ever in my life. There's probably a lot of submits walking around India, just <laughs> money just flying out their pocket because wives are telling horrible lies. Like, someone needs to... We need an Indian lawyer, Leo. We need me there. So I guess they go back to court the next day because he has to go stand trial. I don't, I really don't get what's happening, but I guess he has to go and see if his ex-wife is going to file these charges so she can get her alimony or whatever you call it at this point. Just extortion money, I guess. Okay, so apparently when they went in court, they had something to read. Summit's wife and father-in-law withdrew the criminal case against him and his family. As a result, the judge dropped all charges. So it was all for nothing. Finally, they dropped it. Fantastic. Summit just, he got divorced from his wife. She tried to sue him. She withdrew that. The father says that he's going to sue if he marries Jenny. Hopefully he withdraws from that. Maybe Jenny will withdraw from him. I don't know. Summit is beating everything. Is meat included, probably. In a very cute and wholesome moment, these two share a small victory. And there's really nothing. Nothing else I want to say other than I'm happy for them. So this is like a prayer we are offering to God because definitely we need blessings because our fight is not over yet. I'm telling you that cow walk, the cow said is gonna remove you of all debt. Came, took a shit, went in your house, removed debt. Jenny, trust the cow, not submit. So finally, the next day, everything seems to be looking up. They do another prayer in the house, they get their blessings, and submit says, I'm gonna cook you breakfast for being such a good lady. So I think ring ceremony will be the next thing. Who should we invite? Oh, he also says ring ceremony should be the next thing. Submit is getting his life back on track. Jenny should be feeling really happy about this. So after cooking breakfast or during cooking breakfast, Jenny gets a little annoyed because Samit didn't tell her that his dad said that he's going to probably try and take them to court or object if he gets married to Jenny. But the next day, they go to another lawyer and they ask how they can get around this marriage without Samit's parents knowing because they need like another system. So we got scared that if somebody object, then how we could marry. Oh, that's a crazy concept, isn't it? Like, you know when you are at the altar and someone's like, if anyone sees any objection to this marriage, please speak now, forever hold your peace. Imagine if someone did and they were like, well, shit, we gotta call it off. That would be a very tense moment. I wouldn't invite anyone to the wedding at that point. Just in case. Like, damn. I, w I would start objecting to random people's weddings and then say, psych, because I'm an evil, horrible person. But like, I didn't think that was actually a thing. That seems really, an like, odd. Two people who really want to devote their marriage and life to each other foiled would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those meddling kids by people who say the word objection that's i don't know man that's a weird way to get married you have to face marriage officers and it will be expensive okay but it does not have a religious angle to it what the hell is a marriage officer is that an officer who's like are you married let me see the ring <gasps> Looks fake, but are you married? Then where's your ring? Fine, find 200 rupee. Fine. What is what is that? That is the purpose of special marriage act. Now, if you want to get married fast and without any complication, you go to Vegas. Elvis will do it. The motherfucker will sing you a song and marry you at the same time. Do it. Are Samaj wedding is the most common among the love marriages simply because it is not complicated and neither it is a bit too expensive. Just like marriage should be, not complicated nor expensive. I don't know why in life we ever felt the need to complicate that shit and get all other people involved, get so many materialistic things to just prove that you love and you want to devote someone's life to each other. I get the pizzazz of it. 
I want a big wedding too. I'm not beyond it. I'm just saying. At its core, it's saying that you love and you want to devote your life to this and this person only. It's cute. It shouldn't be expensive. It shouldn't be hard. It should be hard, but only, only in the honeymoon. God damn. I'm gonna leave. So the international marriage lawyer, whatever he's called, says there's a special type of marriage you can do that focuses on love, believe it or not, and the soul of marriage. And all you have to do is show your willingness and people can't even object to that, which is honestly sounds great. And Jenny's super happy and Sumit seems to like it too. Legally, his parents cannot object unless he's less than 18 or a lunatic. <laughs> So can they? No, he's not a lunatic. Is he 18? No, okay. Your visa extension will be very easier because you will have a living spouse here. Oh, so we can go get married the day of the ring ceremony. Yeah. So another great thing happens. Finally, Jenny is, you know, treated to a great, great set of news that she can get married, she can get her visa, and if she has a legal spouse here, she can stay. She could probably work here. It's a great thing. And she then pressures Summit unintentionally by saying, let's get married the same day this ring ceremony is. I don't think he's going to be okay with that, but let's see. Right? Day of the ring ceremony. You want to? Yeah. Ah, oh, that's a no. <laughs> Do you want to get married like right away? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah let's let's see about that. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm busy on that day. I've got a bath. So maybe, maybe tomorrow, tomorrow, the day, the day after, after, next year. He's he's feeling the pressure. He didn't think that it was gonna. I think Samit got so used to things happening. He's like, yeah, we'll just get married when everything's done, thinking that there would constantly be more problems. The fact that there seems to be no problems scares him. So Samit says, yes, we can finally get married. We have no actual problems legally, but I do want to talk to my parents. And he's within his right to do so, especially if he's just gonna say, this is what I'm gonna do. I hope that you accept it. I don't know if that's what's gonna happen, but Jenny he doesn't seem to like it. When your parents are actually in front of you, you might change your mind. What does it mean that I'm not going to talk with my parents ever again about the marriage? No. So Samit tries to convince Jenny to say, listen, I'm, I'm going to talk to them whether you like it or not. She's not happy about it, but they move on to the next day and Samit has some more news. He says, There's somebody's coming to our house. But it's not the parents. It's the brother, but not just the brother. He's got his wife. I'm not feeling good about it, but just to uh, avoid any kind of mess in the relationship with Jenny, I'm getting engaged for and then I'm letting them know. Jesus Christ. Okay, well. Samit has been pretty decent throughout this episode, I gotta say. I, I thought he was doing pretty well. Then apparently he decided to get engaged without telling his parents. This is gonna be trouble, man. This is trouble in paradise if ever I've seen it. So a little fight happens between Samit and Jenny. They're like, hey, you know, Samit wants to tell the parents and get the approval, but even if he doesn't, he's gonna set up a date. Jenny doesn't want to go through this again because she feels like she's in a loop. But while they're fighting, the brother and his wife comes in and they meet each other. We are planning to marry. And we are getting engaged. Tell him when. Don't be scared. Oh God, he didn't even tell his bro that he's getting married the next day. I'm get getting engaged. Damn. Wow, this is... <sighs> Summit likes holding holding on to the truth. That's that seems to be what he does. So I guess the dude's gonna do that. You are not mentally prepared for this thing. Yeah, I've never thought that uh, Jenny and Summit's uh, relationship will continue for this long. Yeah, you thought you, you you thought she was gonna die, didn't you? You thought he was gonna out. You thought the relationship was gonna last less than her age, didn't you sly? No, it lasted. It lasted that long. These two are inseparable. They're like two souls. I accept your relationship, but if you'll marry her, then there is no connection between you and our parents. That doesn't sound like very much accepting. That's like saying, you won the lotto, <laughs> but I'm taking the money and you just get the ticket. This is not really the right thing that anybody wants to hear, is, is what I'm really understanding. These two have fought tooth and nail to be together. I hope that they can figure it out because nobody seems to be on their side. At this point, Jenny starts crying and she starts letting out her real emotions. And it's easy to see this as a funny moment and to be like, oh, she's over, over dramatic or overreacting. But can you imagine if you were in this position for years and constantly fighting for a person and, and that person was fighting for you too. And it wasn't you guys that were the issue. It was everyone around you. It was your family or their family and it was every other aspect and you just kept fighting at some point you you you'd feel the pressure and i very much can see that she's trying her hardest it 
sucks and anyone has to feel so sad about love love shouldn't be hard but anything that's that's good is probably worth fighting for and you could see that they're both doing it we love each other <laughs> damn and i love him i love him damn set in their ways I like how he like nods like she's like, I love him. And he's like, yes, yeah, yeah, that's that's true. She does. That's that's very true. Then she starts banging her hand like she's doing some sort of speech from the 1900s. She was growing up. Damn these people. God damn it. I can't believe it. That's what they taught me in school. They taught me to be angry and point. He's happy. It's, it's sad because the things that Jenny is, she can't change. She can't change her age. She can't change where she's from. Uh, what she can change is like her willingness to be in a different country, to learn the culture. And she's doing that. You should applaud effort in relationships and things. The perfect person is not a person who's something in your head that you just cultivated. The perfect person is like someone who you can see is absolutely trying and giving it their all. And, and where else is Samit gonna find a person like that? Because he's in India, he got a wife that blackmailed him on a daily basis. This is someone who's willing to uproot her life just to be with him. They apparently like each other physically and sensually. I don't know how, but they do it. So it's sad that you're making Jenny cry about things she can't control because she's not a bad person. She's misguided and naive, but not a bad human. So after the brother leaves, Samit has a uh, sort of different change of mind where he says, let's postpone the ring ceremony so he could talk to his parents and try and get their approval. Probably the right thing, but um, Jenny does not seem to be happy. Samit is also always caught up in two walls and doesn't know what the right thing to do is. And whenever he pleases one, the other one gets annoyed. So I understand his position. It's a really tough one. Obviously the parents are never gonna go away, so let's just deal with the parents. Making care? I'm really surprised she didn't try and poison the parents. I'm really surprised the parents didn't try and poison her. I'm, I'm really surprised no poisoning has been going on in this series. It seems like a thing that should make a comeback, poisoning. You never know who, you never know. Could be bad cooking, who knows? Cute. For your mom. Is it too sweet? Everything is perfect. Oh good, that oh. makes me feel so much better. Make sure uh, don't get angry. So apparently the parents are coming over to talk to Samit and Jenny. And I thought he was going there, but they're coming over to his house, which which is uh, good, but they're going to see that wall. So it's uh, horrible. Maybe they'll be blinded by that. They're cleaning the house. Jenny's making f like traditional food. Things are going good. This might work. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, well, Jenny is not going to like the fact that Samit's mom is already on the offensive and says, I won't let him stay with her anymore. So she's coming in with the most open mind possible. She's about as open as a can. Uh, this sets up the final act when Samit and his parents go at it in front of Jenny. What do you mean by that? Not like that. Samit's parents say, we're coming to take you back home. You're 30 something. You're still a young little boy. You need to be fed and put into bed. And he says, I've already got a mommy and her name is Jenny. And she calls me daddy. So that's how that starts. hearing me cancel objection. You can tell that this man is nervous by the fact that his shirt is almost see-through and that shirt was not bought as a style see-through shirt. He sweated so damn hard that you can see his body through it. I've never seen someone sweat that much unless they were a professional athlete. This is really burning through him. That is, that is the most sweat I've ever seen. As usual, um, Samit asks for his parents' approval and Samit's mom, being the open-minded person she is, says, I will never approve of your wrong decision. Just showing how much she truly trusts her son in marriage. Again, there is no law above the parents' law is a power-tripping oppose. Like, I just don't understand. If she was a policewoman, it would be the only time she'd have more power than she does now. Stop right there, criminal scum! This is, this, this should be almost parental misuse at this point. Saying that is just absolutely wrong as a human. Samit, uh, uh, says I'm going to marry her anyway and she says over our dead bodies not only her dead body she's now bringing her husband into this and being like he's going if I'm going oh damn a hundred year old Jesus everyone's just taking shots at her I thought I was the only one who could you that's just mean if you're doing it so but yeah no her, uh, there's a lot of screaming going on I thought we were just watching a Bollywood movie again 
This is this seems to be uh, a daily occurrence at this point. People screaming at each other. I, if I was Jenny, I would just leave the room. <laughs> now that's overstepping, my boy. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little mad at that. That's overstepping. Saying you'll find a woman a thousand, a million times better than her is the most subjective thing I've ever heard in my life. To submit somehow this is the woman that is a million times better than anyone else. And you know what? That's perfectly fine. She absolutely can be and probably is to him. And that is perfectly fine because there's nothing wrong with Jenny. She's a, she's she's his everything. And that is what you look for. When you find that, you hold on to it with dear life because love is not easy to find and it is not always pure and it is not always genuine. And if you can withstand the trials and tribulations for this long, you deserve to have that happiness. So saying someone's a million thousand times better, maybe on physical appearance, something else, bullshit. Love is more than just physical. It's frustrating to not know what they're saying. Jenny, do you not think you might be able to guess what they're saying? You, all the finger pointing loud. You think they're doing a ceremony or something? What? She's just sitting there like, oh, they're talking about me. I heard my name. I heard my name. I'm pointing at you too. <laughs> How you doing? Nope. All right. I'm your mother. Oh, it's a mother's love. <laughs> just not your mother. Sumit kiss karta hua dikhai deta hai. What do you mean? He loves the elderly. That's a great value. I love the elderly. I won't tongue one. I'm not as good as him. I don't want to play bingo every night. Where's everyone going? Bingo? This guy's the man. What are you talking about? Uh, at this point, everyone starts screaming. Smith gets down on his knees and like shakes his mom. It's again, like the best Bollywood movie you never saw. It's called A Mother's Love. And it has like her on one side and Jenny on the other side and he's looking and smiling. It's uh, gonna be made into a Hollywood movie. But everyone is screaming, shouting, fighting. People are sweating. Jenny's not understanding. She's like, woo, they're saying my name. It's it's crazy. And, and it's crazy that they're fighting over this. Parents are telling their son what they want. The son is trying to convince them that he really does like old woman. Who do you side with? I, I side with love. I also side with ice cream, which I really want right now. I cannot do this to this family. I need to just go back to America. At this point, while they're fighting, Jenny takes it upon herself to leave. And she's like, I can't do this. I can't be a part of this if it's breaking the family family apart, which, you know, I completely empathize with her. I'm just, I feel so sad that she, she's been made to feel that way. There's a lot of this going on, which you know, like this is passionate. It's very much seen in India movies when you do this. It's very passionate. I don't know what it means. I think it means I want a peach really badly. I don't know what it means. Oh shit, oh, he started getting on his dad's lap, grinding and hugging. I don't know if he grinded, but there's two sweaty men hugging each other. <laughs> Lekin. All right, end with a hug on daddy. Daddy to daddy yes. hug, very nice. Everything's good now. Uh, and Samit says he's not coming back if they're gonna talk like this. So Samit's mother says you should be ashamed. And in the most baller fashion I've seen, it should have been a Bollywood scene. Samit looks at his mother, takes a pause and is like, nahin, mere ko sharam nahin. And then he translates to Jenny as uh, Samit's mother and Jenny have a conversation where Samit's mother says, you should be ashamed because he's younger than your daughter. And she says she's not ashamed because she found love and, and that's all that matters. You should consider me a son. Anytime she treats him like a son is during the bondage and sensual activities. So trust me, you don't want to see her treat him as your son. You know what I mean? My daughter married somebody that I didn't want her to marry, but I accepted it. You know why? Because I saw my daughter happy. She's talking about the daughter being a lesbian. Initially, Jenny didn't accept it, but then she was like, oh, they're happy. So they're comparing being a lesbian to being Indian, which is just the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. You, excuse me, I may be Indian, but I'm not a lesbian. Or the other way around, I may be a lesbian, but I'm not Indian. That's just the funniest shit I've ever heard. So then Jenny starts screaming, and then the mom goes a bridge too far because she said, I'm going to commit. Don't know how to get around that right here. She actually says that. And if you ever want to be a bad mother to your son, you say that. That I don't care what the context is. Saying that as a guilt trip makes you a bad person. I, I can say that wholeheartedly because there is no reason you should ever be saying that to your son or daughter to get them to do something. That is manipulation to the next degree. And it is absolutely wrong. And at that point, you've lost all credibility. Summit wins this one. 
तुम्हारे साथ फिफ्टी परसेंट एंड यू नो वट शी गेट्स समित सेज ही वॉन्ट मैरी हर बट ही वॉन्ट नॉट स्टे विद हर एंड ऑल दो समित मदर डजन अग्री समित फादर सेज लिसन वीव रीच द कॉम्प्रोमाइज फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ योर डिमांड हैव बिन अग्री टू ही इज नॉट कैन मैरी हर बट ही इज स्टेंग विद हर वी शुड जस्ट टेक वट वी कैन गेट सो देन द पेरेंट्स लीव विद टेल बिटवीन दर लाइक्स एंड समित सेज समथिंग दैट शॉक्ट मी ही सेज हाउ यू कैन ई clearly sees that what is emotional blackmail is you can see that i'm getting emotionally blackmailed so he realizes what is happening yet it continues to happen and i'm not saying that he should stop it but the fact that he's aware that he's getting emotionally blackmailed from his parents yet still loves them should show his parents how much this man actually cares about them no parent should treat their kids like that but but he loves them and he cares for them so he puts up with it and it's horrible and and it's happened before i've been i've dealt with that not to this degree but my goodness <sighs> It's tough. They get a moment of silence and solitude these two and they instead of fighting with each other they they come together. <clears throat> Not like that. And it's very cute. Really really I want them to be happy. But not like this. I'm not going to give up on you until you do. So it you know it's a very tough situation Jenny doesn't know if she wants to leave and go back to America Samit says he's not giving up on her and a week goes by and within the week they they repair themselves they're a bit happier they have a picnic and like Jenny you don't have much time left like in life or in her current visa oh i thought you meant because soon that what i see in movies and tv and everywhere <laughs> all your bollywood movies is this what you see people do drink wine. Yeah, in the Bollywood movies they drink wine. You have to watch Bollywood movies to see what people drink. You have to take notes and shit. They also do it in real life, bro. But, you know, I guess if you had to watch movies for that, we have other problems. Samit's so trying to take on a romantic thing. It's a nice gesture. This is really sweet that you did this. I didn't even know Samit could do something like that. What? Take you on a picnic? How <laughs> low are your standards for this? <laughs> I didn't even know he was capable of walking outside and setting down a blanket and sitting on it. I saw this man paint a wall. I was like, he is a lost cause. I'm not giving up, and I still want you to be in my life. Uh oh, I found the raindrop. In the most romantic thing possible. with their wines in cups it starts raining and just like a bollywood movie instead of running away they get soaked in it what wow, is this romantic isn't it god is a guy is getting happy that would insinuate that he's jacking off on you so please don't say that again samit then pulls out the big guns and gets a ring of some sort looks like a pop tart ring or something but hey it's the thought that counts he puts it on a finger during the rain it's a romantic beautiful moment and she loves it the ring which i'm giving jenny it a something uh, about commitment it's something about promise it's something about expressing our love unlike most rings which are just about you know now we can do bomb stuff right thanks thank you sherlock holmes again for your beautiful input into what rings do as a really like it, this is the bollywood kind of scene happen Yes, remember that scene when the white 60-year-old dates a 30-year-old Indian man? It's every Bollywood movie, classic story. It's called White. I don't I don't even know what the word for that is. And the season ends with them walking off together in the rain with a promise ring issued from Samit to Jenny saying he is going to eventually marry her. This is another cliffhanger that we're left on. Will they or won't they get married? I don't know until episode 3. So you're going to have to watch to find out. But I will say this relationship has its share of ups and downs. They are not perfect people. Jenny gets mad very easily. Submit lies a lot. But at the core, these two really love each other. That's why after all of these crazy things that happen, they still stick it out. And it's somewhat inspiring because beyond all of the physical stuff, there are two people who really connect with each other. And I can't hate on that. I really do like these two. I hope that they end up together in the next one. I have a lot of love for them. But I'm going to but I really think they're just hilarious in all the wrong ways. I can tell you right now the last episode is going to be probably the most fun. It's the most fun I had like watching. So I hope you're ready for the next one. I'll be wearing another kurta. Please comment down below if you like the look or your favorite part of the video. And until next time, this is me saying, if you have parents who try to extort you or try and say crazy shit, play that Will Smith song and then play the Chris Rock video where he slaps him and then say this will happen to you. It might work. I don't I'm not good at advice. What are you talking about? Bye. She ain't even got a ass. She did a dash and bit a lash. You know it dash and she